everybody and welcome back to the true gamer podcast the podcast hosted by two gamers for you the true gamers i'm one of your hosts eddie along with my bro the inverted gamer himself sheps how's it going bro it's going good you know what frick you corwin (laughs) the inverted the inverted gamer thing i got i got tagged in some random person's tweet and about like inverted people being like upside you know idiots or retails or something right yeah yeah as they are yeah, right yeah, yeah and uh and i got into it but what I don't think he knew was that a bunch of people just tweeted at me about this, about how I was a retard. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. And I don't think he was maybe included in a bunch of them, because some people just tagged at me, you know, didn't have, like, at Corwin and the other person. Right. And, uh, like, I don't care. Like, they're just dickheads on the internet. Yeah. You know? But I was like, this mother fricker give me all this thing. And then he was like, inverted, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no one. And then he started talking about mouse and keyboard. I'm like, no one uses inverted mouse and keyboard. That's different. <laughs> We're talking about like the joysticks. Like if you think about the joystick as the guy's head, you push forward, he looks down. You push up, he looks up. And side to side as well. Right, yeah. yeah, Oh, shit. (laughs) So a bunch of people saw that and then just came at you and were like, you fucking retard. So I wanted to call Corwin out because how dare you. But I also like, I also appreciate the heat or always respect savagery. Uh, But I think he didn't realize or didn't know Probably didn't know because a lot of people just came at me, just at me. They were like, "How can you invert? That's the stupidest thing. Like, it doesn't make any sense." Or someone tweeted at me randomly, "I'm only inverted for flying." I'm like, "I, I didn't ask you. No, we didn't. I yeah. don't care." Also, and this is the most important thing: just enjoy your games. You know? <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> I like that. That's really. He, there's no way he could have known. There's that There's absolutely happened. no way. And the main, but the person amazing. as well, who I think has a fairly large Twitter following, retweeted me and called me out in the thing. And again, like I don't care. <laughs> like. That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, God. And that got, I got, like, I came back and I'm like, why is my Twitter blowing up? Oh, some randoms calling me out for being invited. <laughs> you deserve it. This yeah. is what you deserve, okay? For the record, Corey, don't feel bad. Like, I, if you did, I don't care. Like, I don't care what <laughs> random people on the internet have to say. Have you, have you seen what the kind of content I've been making for what, like, <clears> six <throat> years? Like, so I don't care about that. But it's just, it cracked me up. That is hilarious. Yeah. That, that I would not have wanted it to go any other way. That, yeah. that is perfect. It's perfect. Right? That's absolutely great. Um, but yeah, that, that fucking, you've made this podcast yeah. start so good. It's, uh, yeah. it's all downhill from here, guys. It's all downhill. <laughs> but talking of downhill, yes. this podcast, along with all of our content across both of our channels and the flagship show on the Four Pillars Network, is brought to you by our incredible super bros over on patreon.com forward slash conversations. Who do we have to th- We have Diogo Dildo, <gasps> Isak the Ultimate Comsock, Carol to Rivia, aka Casper the Friendly patron record friction dan the man jeremy runner that's right an official avenger martin scorsese's master h bars 12 the midget aloy from smallville sabine the formal freeloader christian master chief himself albus Scori, super sus ben Freyer, who is a clone of eddie uh, the star wars encyclopedia adam sunling raj vandalin he's got a plan guys you just gotta follow him on one last job uh, the filthy fifa fanatic joe mccormack and a brand new super patron who hasn't got back to me yet on his interest so i couldn't come up with an interesting name however he Just wrote an out. interesting name he's, he wrote, he's at fifteen dollars fifteen dollars yeah call him a cunt fucking cunt uh, uh uh juicy left nut 69 that's what he <laughs> called himself right there so mate uh, why do you need any interest that's perfect he tells you everything he's into that's your name right from now on okay juicy, i feel yeah. bad for calling you out and then you have such an epic name <laughs> i was like, just calling him again no, Shit, no. this guy's too cool <laughs> god damn it <laughs> thank you bro so much for keeping the lights and mics on the gaming going here at combo stations yeah, we appreciate um, it speaking of calling as well yeah and how super he is yeah. he, said, he put up a picture the other day of him um in the uh, yellow fucking hat. Yellow hat. Yeah. But the only thing that I could notice was that he was wearing a Superman t-shirt. And I was like, that's my boy. Oh, that explains <laughs> that. I was like, why do you care about a <laughs> yellow hat? Because I saw that tweet. I'm like, I don't get I don't get it. It's a yellow hat. Yeah. <laughs> he was just wearing a Superman yeah. t-shirt. I was like, that's my boy. That's, and the fact so that he, he got you into so much shit. That's even more. I'm so proud. <gasps> oh, my God. Corey, you're they so, grow up so fast. They grow up so quick oh there's just there's just no telling what they'll do tomorrow (laughs) but anyway bro how are you doing yeah i'm doing good man yeah i'm doing good we we recorded a standalone video which is the first thing we've it's the first time we've done that not 
kind of gaming related, entertainment related. Yeah, yeah about, about the uh, Superman, stuff. Superman controversy stuff, which was cool because we got to do like an old schooly uh, Combros video, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. I wonder so, if the guys will be like, oh, nostalgia. Cause yeah, it, it feels like it's been too long. It really does, and we got to use the original sick intro, which yeah. I miss, and I'm glad that we're back to being conversations now that we can finally work that in. That was the main thing. A lot of people were asking. There was a bit of confusion what's going on and nothing's changing other than we're just changing the Back name. Back to our branding. Because yeah. that name was so cool and it's so synonymous with us. And conversations make sense to somebody that's never heard it before, but combo plations only make sense if you know conversation. So it was, it was a good move. I like it. And um, everyone calls us the combros guys. And yeah, it's like, we're known as conversations. So how does complation? It doesn't right, right, right. Also, if I remember, I will link that, do one of those cards to this point in the video mm -hmm. i'll totally forget that but hopefully probably not. yeah uh six minutes, six <laughs> minutes. So, uh, totally gonna forget it but it was actually a good little discussion i thought um more, some more twitter drama yes involved yes. uh and that's it let's get into some gaming what's what's up what are you playing at the minute oh my bro so i already two, know yeah. two games yeah. i've been playing recently yeah, 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 I'm, yeah. i've got my uh my trophy cup here because i am yeah. in fact one recipient of the uh of the bloodborne platinum trophy yeah. it took I you six years of daily grinding six to get there. years of daily grinding <laughs> That's the thing. So for the people that don't know, um, I streamed yesterday Bloodborne and I got the Platinum Trophy. Where did you stream, bro? Uh, on twitch.tv slash conversations. Oh, that's Our brand new channel. It's great. I think you should yeah. go check it out if you ever have some oh, time. Cool, yeah. um, I was over there and I was streaming that. The reason why I was doing it was because I started Bloodborne when it came out. Back yeah, I actually in remember you talking about it. Yeah. And 15. I remember we discussed it because it was the kind of game where, because I've always viewed... Um, difficulty settings as like a gaming tool it's an entertainment tool you set it to the appropriate difficulty for the maximum level of fun yes and you like uh bdsm I you do. like to be whipped and degraded mm. and you would you for no reason played the last of us on grounded yes uh well it was a trophy hold on there's a trophy there was a trophy a oh, trophy hunter right here no big deal you know big deal you right? chose to play the uncharted trilogy all on uh whatever their version the of the hardest mode grand mode as well and nothing that was, that was I think it's just the hardest yeah. kind of way it was. But yeah, that I'll which, which I don't I don't I don't view these. So it's also one of the reasons that in general I've never been interested in the Souls yeah. um or the Born series of games, whatever it is. Yeah. It's all like Souls it's stuff Bourne. like that. Um Right. Uh, I've never been interested in things like Sekiro, which I under I understand the appeal, it's just not for me. I like yeah. the ability to get, to set stuff to the right amount of difficulty for me. You're not good at video games, exactly. that's what it is. That's, exactly. That's what we well, understood from that, right, guys? Zaheer right there, he's like, yes, thank you, Eddie, for exactly. saying it. Thank you. So th I remember that was my, talking about it. That was my yeah. first, uh, yeah. that type of game playing, like Souls-type game yeah. that I'd ever played. So I was like... I'd never been into it before. Yeah. But once I started playing it, I got hooked, and I got the, the feeling of like constantly failing and then coming back and then i get yeah, the euphoria yeah. and then i go to anyway i played it back then got all of the trophies except for the one final trophy which is to kill this woman called the blood queen the yarnum queen okay. at the end of this chalice yeah i got stuck at a point where i couldn't get the materials to make this final chalice and i i i just left it. i was like i can't do it i can't do it got pissed off and six years went by yeah and i'm much more of a seasoned gamer now right yeah and I have a, a YouTube channel where uh, upon we have a, a a podcast called The True Gamer Podcast. It's, that is a true thing. And then the word got out that I don't have the trophy for this uh, for this Bloodborne thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, shit, now I have to get it. And Sean said I can no yeah. longer call myself <clears throat> a true gamer until I get this Platinum trophy. Well, then it's done. And luckily for you, you have more free time now being a new father, running a couple of businesses. Exactly. Right. All the free time in the right. world. <laughs> so anyway, I managed to get I managed to get through all those dungeons, <laughs> get to the final dungeon. Yeah. And beat the Blood Queen, you and did. everyone got to see it was a euphoric moment. I was there. I was, you was there. George was there as well. All the guys in our community, Sean was there, Kate was there. Everyone was there. It was an amazing moment to share with the community. It was cool. And after six years, I finally have the platinum trophy for Bloodborne. And I'm quite damn proud. Can of I that ask myself. you a question? I'm going to give this out to the chat as well to vote. Can we officially now say, based on how quickly you actually beat this one incredibly supposedly difficult boss, that? It was, in fact, Sean and Katie holding you back. That's the only deduction that I can make. Because when they weren't there, oh, suddenly a breeze through it all. But when they're there, oh, it's like, oh, so that's just a little time. You guys don't stream. know this, but you you had this big, long stream, and you did eventually figure out how to get everybody in the games and yeah, stuff, Yeah, the cop right? system's crap. It, it yeah. sucks. And uh, you failed. Yes. And then the next time we met up, which was a few days afterwards, 
we were talking, I was asking you about it. And you said, you know, what's weird is off stream, I went and did it and I breezed through it. I just beat them and the next boss and it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. And, and I, I said, that's obviously because Katie and Sean aren't there. Frick those guys. No, I think honestly, it's because you, it messed with your rhythm and you spent so much time trying to get people into the game. And this is a big gaming thing. Yeah. Which is that a good co-op system, if there's any co-op at all, it needs to be slick. Yes. The Division had a really good co-op system. Oh, yes. Except for the raid. Uh, <laughs> Destiny has a pretty good co-op system. You, yeah, it, it needs yeah. to just be like seamless. You get your friends in cool and get gaming. Cool of amazing. Yeah. That. And that's, I think, genuinely what it was. It was the the constant weight and battling to yeah. try and get your mates together so you can play the game in between every single try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas if... When I had a, I felt like it wasn't a rest. Exactly. You know, like when you when you're at the gym, you work, and you take like two minutes to rest, and yeah. you come back fresh. Yeah. I felt like you're working to fight the thing, okay, because it's a tough game, and then you're working even harder to try and get people back in, so you never got to rest and reset your rhythms and stuff. The real boss fight was trying to get your friends together. Yeah, that was way harder than the game. Yeah, it actually was. Anyway, I that genuinely, I think that's what it was, and because I got to go back into the game immediately and go for the next yeah, try, yeah. I managed to build up a rhythm and also build up my tactics. And get it in the end. That's the thing as well, because because every time you lot, which wasn't that many, it was only like four deaths. Yeah, it didn't was pretty, that it was much, pretty yeah. good. Where you were like, oh, I got greedy on that. Okay, I need to only do three swings here. Or, oh, I tried this. That actually worked really good. I need to remember to shoot these things. And then you came back and like, oh, why am I using this thing? I'll add that and it adds damage. And then the final one, you went and changed special glyphs or whatever that make your shit do because i know you i noticed <laughs> you did way more damage just in your regular strikes yeah. on the last attempt because you changed that stuff out and you're yeah. using your fire stuff and you you sort of got a better feel for her rhythms and the stuff you could do to interrupt it and that looked drastically different to the previous streams because i'm a true gamer that's why that's and now what i'm officially is. am a true gamer because uh sean said so that's uh, right i need to have this trophy um there is I one go thing go ahead because you went then exploring uh trophy stats afterwards yes um it was something like 16 percent have the ghost of tsushima plat yes that means one a little over one in five or a little under one in five people so like one in 4.8 people or something that played the game that finished the game yeah went and platted it yeah. that's freaking insane that is insane and it's either i don't think it's too much that it's easy i think it's more that the game is so good and wants to keep yeah. people in it that they want to continue playing and then they got to that point which is just a testament to how good that fucking game is made yeah, yeah. Um, there was one other game that I played. Yeah. Uh, actually, do, what, did you play anything? Let's we'll, do, we'll tandem this if you uh, want to talk about something. So it's not all just me. No, it is. I'm just going through Ghost of Tsushima again. Yeah. And dragging my feet on streaming it. But okay, all right. Which, by the way, on that note, at some point you and me are going to go through OBS. Yes. And figure stuff out. And it would I be did, cool to have that sort of like I, the stuff for you as I well. I did commit, and because I am a man of my word, you can pick the alerts and stuff. Oh, I, oh boy! I don't it? even know how if how i was made to agree to that but prepare i did for, agree to it prepare for a lot of superman stuff <laughs> oh, okay that's better than what i was worried about <laughs> what was you worried i thought you were gonna do like all sorts of weird hentai noises <laughs> damn it damn it why didn't i st ah, oh you're no. stuck superman stuff no it's just gonna be like a new follower martha <laughs> why did you say that no <laughs> Oh, that would be so good. That would be so good. But I thought you were going to do like the, oh, yes. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to take it to that. You know, sort of weird hentai stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. That, now, now I feel like I've missed out. Now you I've did. Like you did. You're on, you're on camera now. Yeah. I'm committing to not doing that. It's been done now. I can't take but it so back. I can't do the face cam because we've got a bunch of issues which we've not been able to resolve. Yeah. Just like power draw issues and stuff. But that means one. On twitch.tv slash conversation. Uh, conversation. Yeah. Twitch.tv slash yes. conversations. Yeah. That's right. Um, eventually, I'll get to do a face reveal, which would be cool. Yeah. No one's seen your face yet. Exactly. So that'd be, that'd be an cool. interesting thing. You'd be able um, to put that in the title. Face reveal. I'm going to do a face reveal stream. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do a face reveal stream. Uh, and But we'll have like proper alerts. Yeah. You know. And what I might do because I don't have the face, is I might do what you do, you know, with the, the face cam box. Yeah. And I'll just put a person in there pixelated. <laughs> like for every stream. You know, but it never moves. It's like, but there you go. This is my, this yeah, is my camera. Facial, though, isn't it? It's very professional. It's a Twitch, my Twitch streamer here, professional yeah. Twitch streamer. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually quite funny, that. I might actually, if, can you pixelate a face? Yeah. Can we do, we'll get some blue screen. We'll do me pixelated and it will just be like imposed on the screen. <laughs> That'd be funny. That? Yeah. Uh, we could do that. We okay. could do that sick so, oh. so yeah so i haven't really been playing anything i'm really waiting for um mass effect 
Oh yes, uh, coming up soon, isn't it? Yeah, 14th soon. of May. So I think I think there's two games where we're going to try that digital sharing thing. Yes, so uh, Ratchet and Clank as well. We'll do Ratchet yeah. and Clank and we'll do Mass Effect. Yeah. I'm not going to stream Mass Effect because I know it. I am, however, going to play it and watch you stream it. Yes, that's something. Because uh, when you said it, everyone in the chat as well, they were like, yes, you do need to do you it. Do need so to. I feel like I will. that'll be my next series because we've, uh, we've closed chapter on yeah. Bloodborne now. So we can do that. You'll be doing that. I'll be doing Ratchet and Clank when it comes out, maybe a month later. Yeah. And uh, afterwards, I really genuinely, really strongly, and I know you're not super into older games, mm. but for you, it'll be new and you have got the Master Chief Collection. Yes, Dan gifted me that. Yeah. And they are quite, with the with the Master Chief Collection, it's updated graphics and stuff, but it's basically the exact same story. Um, it will be really good. I think those are two great franchises for you to sink yeah, your teeth yeah. into. I think you'll really enjoy both, to be honest. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Speaking of great games, yes. uh, I'm playing one other game. What? Which is Returnal. Oh, yeah. I meant to ask you about this because because I have been saying an absolute lie for a while, which is that Ratchet & Clank is the first PS5 only game. Yes. Which we, is why I'm so interested in it. We, the thing is, I, was, I didn't correct you at any point because do you know why I felt like that wasn't true for this game? It was because... Of the type of developer that Housemark is, yeah, they've previously made arcade games, yeah. very like, very well done, sort of glorified, over the top, almost like Tetris type games. Yeah, even like, though it's like, like side scroll, Rezo Gun. They yeah. did, they did a uh, Dead Nation, which was like a top down twin stick shoot shooter, very different to what this yeah. game is. And I was like, is it going to be anything? I, I don't really know. But this is actually the first proper it PlayStation is. full-fledged game. Can I say, I feel... I got the impression, because I didn't play a lot of Rezo, I kind of just jammed it a little bit here and there when someone had it. They did uh, Sucker Punch. They had absolutely no right to make this game. Absolutely no right. No track record. And they came out, and from what I saw of you streaming it, they smashed it, man. At least in terms of like the way it looks, moves, and performs... It looks really good. It looks really good. It looks smooth. It looks fun. It looks like the movement's good. Well, let me tell you. Yeah. I haven't completed the game yet, just so full disclosure. Yeah. I'm at something like 15 hours in or something like that. This game, so far, so long as it doesn't drop the ball at the end, yeah. which people haven't said it has, this is a 10 out of 10 game, game of the year candidate for me. Really? That's how good this game is. Uh, did you get it? A disc, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to have to borrow this. Honestly, I, I don't know if you will like it because it's one. It's almost not a Souls game. Oh, I've seen you saying this because if you die somewhere, you get reset. That's the thing. There. So I wanted to give my impressions on this. I want this to be like one of the smaller segments in the beginning okay. before we get onto the new stuff like that. So if you do want to skip over to the news, there's time codes in the chat, in the bottom yeah. or whatever, wherever you guys are listening and watching this. Um, It's a really, really good game. So no spoilers, but... You start off, you're on this planet. Yeah. You're just crash landed. You're by yourself and you have to go through all of these areas. Now it's a roguelite. Do you happen to know what a roguelite is? So what that is essentially is that you go through areas and if you die, you get reset back to the beginning where you started off. Right. Now in most games, in like arcade games, that means it just resets and then you play the whole thing again. But they've yeah. woven that into the story of the game. Okay. So they've made it a, like a live, die, repeat situation. Right, right, right. Where, like if you die, then you wake up where you were at the beginning of this, yeah, this yeah. cycle. You have... You... Does your character know that they've... Di... So your character knows that they died? Yes. In the beginning, they don't know. But then they go yeah. along and then they see a corpse and it's like... It's oh the beginning God. of Groundhog Day. You're like, this day seems really familiar. And then they're like, no, 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 I'm reliving this. They're like, what's well, that thing? Like, she remembers Wait, some her corpse things. is still there. Her corpse is still there. So she sees her corpse okay. and it's like overgrown. And she's like, oh, I've seen... It's like, there's a person here, but they have the same suit technology that we do. And then she looks at the suit and it's got the name written on the side, Selena, her name. And it's like... What? oh my god what's going on okay, okay, and it's okay. like and then she progresses through and she finds scout logs and it's her voice talking about stuff that she's experienced and she is, goes through the world and it continues is that stuff there hypothetically if you were to do a zero death run which i know you're doing zero death but you mm. obviously, obviously have glitches yeah which work similarly yeah were you to do a zero death run would you find it would that stuff be there so like you get to a world and this isn't her first life I think, yes, there would okay, be. Cool. I think they would have, like, ass assumed, like, they would have put the story as, like, you woke up in cycle 200 or something okay, like that. cool, cool, cool. As opposed to you were the first person okay. or whatever was in there. It sounds really interesting. And from the look of the game... It is super interesting. I'm thinking 
from from my perspective, I'm thinking mostly like the movement stuff, how smooth it looks, mm-hmm. how fast like the frame rate is, and um, like my, in my opinion, the best thing Ghost of Tsushima ever did was bring it up to 60 FPS. Yeah, <laughs> which which by the way, I didn't. It was so good at before. I didn't even really notice that it was in 30 FPS, but at 60, it's so incredible. Yeah, I weirdly, I'm finding the jewels easier. Um, more time to react and stuff like that yeah i'm just i'm just finding them easier at 60 fps which isn't say that they are easy and yeah. i think i'm actually playing it on i think i put the difficulty up halfway through the game when i first played it mm. so I, I played a bunch of duels on medium and i did find them more difficult than right. on hard with the so, so frame rate's a big deal to me i love frame rate i love how smooth shows how much it helps yeah for me like one of the things uh, the the pinnacle for gaming is like smooth combat smooth movement right. and that's the thing as well even outside of combat the movement her running and like the speed she moves out and the, the weird little teleporty thing she does looks so smooth it looks so great so i kind of feel like a fake gamer for saying ratchet and clank was the only i feel like well ratchet and clank as i said it's i know i know what you mean i know what yeah. you mean it's like we sort of all put this one on the side because it was like an unproven untested yeah. we were like are these guys going to be able to deliver anything because it's so foreign to what they yeah, what they made, they've done before they made like minesweeper type games in it yeah and what's really interesting as well is that well two things let me just explain that the yeah. world changes each time that you die okay so if you where you start is completely the same but the first door you go through could be completely different when you enter there so right. you don't know where you're going each time you're gonna go okay you just sort of get a rhythm for things you're like okay and when you go out there you have to discover things as if you're on a brand new alien planet right, like right. all right i know what this thing does it heals me here. I know what these things do. They hurt me. I know that this enemy is that type. Oh, I know what that type of door takes me to this sort of area. Right. I know that, that does that, blah, blah, blah. And you figure things out. That's why, that's what the good part of Roguelite saw is that yeah. when you die, while you have lost your progress, you're not starting from square one. You as a gamer of progress. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the, that's the draw to these types of games. Now, um, there are some things that you do get that are permanent. So like um, after a while you go to an area and you pick up like a, essentially a thermal katana, which is like essentially a lightsaber. Say no more, G. It's the best. I'm invested. When you slice someone, I, I've, sometimes I'm like, I'm not even going to use my gun. Just going to slice people up yeah, from yeah, that. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Um, Has it got haptic? Yes. Uh, and that's another how does thing. the katana feel? I'll, I'll talk about the, the okay. performance stuff and how it feels about that. But that's really cool. Um, and also when you go along, you get these, um, you get little upgrades for your suit. Some of them aren't permanent. Some of them okay. are. Uh, I've seen talking about the upgrades. I've seen, I think you and some other people have had this where like, you put put the PlayStation on rest mode and then it downloaded a patch or something and then restarted and you lost your progress because as far as the game's consider- concerned, you died. Yeah. Or the game so was turned off. You get these, you can get these things called parasites. They're yeah. essentially alien little bugs that you find that latch onto your body where well, you choose to latch, yeah, latch yeah. onto your body and they can give you buffs, but they also have a debuff Eddie. on it as well. I can't do the voice. <laughs> the venom. Eddie. There you go. They give a buff, but they also give a debuff. And it's always, right, like, right. so it's like, you heal 25%. faster, but you do like half damage or something. Something yeah. like that. And um, they have this thing called malignancy. So when you pick up a an item, it could be infected with something called malignancy. If you pick it up, there's a chance that you affect your suit really, really badly. So like your dash is disabled. Right. Or this is disabled. Or And in order to overcome that malfunction, you have to do a certain action in the game, like kill three enemies or pick up these these uh, this currency in the game okay, okay. to overcome it. And it's a really cool little mechanic. Sometimes it's really cool. Sometimes it's really bad. Right. In the beginning, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And I so picked you just up- turned up fully debuffed. Like, this game's so hard. I'm just like picking up parasites. I'm like, ooh, plus 25 protection. Awesome. But every time I pick up an item, it does damage to me. Right. I'm like, oh shit. And I'm picking up I'm like, what is going on? Uh, 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 what's going on? I'm getting hit by something. And I've realized that what right, my mistake right, was. Right. But then when I die, it gets wiped and then yeah. it comes back again. Um, there is one problem that people are bringing up. Yes. I personally haven't found this as a huge issue, but I can see the annoyance. Yeah. There's no save points in the whole game. Yeah, so this is the thing. As I was going to say, I, I'm i really intrigued by this game. And everything you've said has made me really want to play it. But I wouldn't, I'm not going to commit to finishing the game because I don't necessarily like games like that. That's just not my style. Mm-hmm. But... I don't know. You're selling it to me, man. Like you're really selling it, it's and it sounds so good. And it looked great, re- really fun, really fun. And there's also the intrigue of the, you know, the house that we've seen in the yeah, trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a there's an astronaut that follows you, and it's like, what the fuck is the astronaut about? The other thing is that 
I'm not really into horror games. It's just not my thing. Yeah. And this initially kind of looked like a horror. But yeah. from what I saw of you, it's not so much a horror as it is more like a sci-fi. You're in a dangerous world, but it's not horror. Yeah. Like you're not being haunted or something. There's this weird time paradoxy stuff. And I have to say, for most of it, no. Yeah. When you get to I the don't house, mind a little bit. Yeah. When you get to the house, straight horror. Right, right, right. It straight turns into PT, and I'm like, wait, wait. wait. <sighs> when you say it straight turns, do you mean as bad or like? As bad. Oh, shit. I go into the I'm house. Out. I go into the house. I'm everything's out. silent. I'm and out. every now and again, you'll hear like no, a... That's cool. I'm out. Ding, 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 ding. Like no, there's I'm a out. music box playing and you're like, oh shit. I'm out. No, no it's okay. No, no. It's okay. I'm out. See, Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. The katana, you nearly had me. And the thing is, it's something unavoidable. It's you part of the, the game. You the first half. <laughs> you have to do it. <laughs> anyway, um, so about the save thing. Yeah. You can go on these fucking insanely long runs where yeah. like you go into the world you go to pick up everything so you can buff your character correctly yeah, get yeah. all of the points available move on to the next they call it biomes which is the next like yeah, world yeah, that yeah. you go on to go up to this boss prepare yourself and you can go i went for four hours on one run and if i die at any point that's my whole progress reset and go back to the beginning if for some reason I've go go three hours, four hours, whatever it might be, and I have to go tend to Isla, or it's time to go to bed, it's three in the morning, let me go to bed or something like that, you can pause the game and leave it like that if you want yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. But most people, what they do is they put it in rest mode or something like that. I mean, I'm talking old school Nazi zombies. Yeah, exactly, right? And just let one zombie like try to claw to get you. Now, that's where the problem is. And what I encountered, you guys might have seen me post on Twitter. Yeah. I put it in rest mode thinking this is a safe space. Absolutely. This is absolutely fine. Turn I'll leave the it there off. and I'll come back. I'll be fine. And then I come back to the game and I get a notification that says, this game was updated while in rest mode and therefore was closed. And I was like, nah. So <clears throat> here's the difference in you and me. I take the right. discount and return it to you. <laughs> uh, if, that that happens, point, like that. Uh, if that happens to so, me the thing is even um i'd be really salty that may i'd maybe do that twice if if i was in the game died mm -hmm. and got reset and had all that stuff reset yeah that that's something that really would annoy me yeah just as just the way i'm wired if that happened i don't play the game anymore it's pretty brutal I, especially I, if that happened i would be like no, that's it. Never mind. It's not for me. Maybe it's because, I mean, if you were to be playing the game and you died after three hours, it's the same thing, essentially. Yeah. But that was taken from me rather than me making a stupid yeah. decision and dying. So yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe that because I've been used to dying and then coming back that I felt and okay also, about it. But from, from, the, from the sound <clears throat> of the game, a like a quick save or something like that is not appropriate. That's the thing. It's not yeah. that you can't have it in that type of game. It ruins it. Yeah. And there's some people that would like quick save they would disconnect from the internet upload that to the to a usb stick or to the cloud and then if they die then they revert to an old save and go back and it's yeah, a way yeah. of cheating it, it's not that type of game yeah. you can't do that but there is some ideas some people are throwing out ideas there where they're like what if you have an auto save system that if you die it wipes that save because then it's like it will protect it from any crashes but then if you die then you truly do get reset like normal right but then again, you can still do that cheating method and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think they need to make like a, a maybe a a landmark save system. Like you find something in particular, but also like so. Obviously, after you beat a boss, for example, you shouldn't have to refight a boss if you beat them. Yeah, that's obviously a big one. I think that makes perfect sense, at least. So in in this, they've they've done it quite interestingly. Okay. Once you beat that boss, you get something that allows you to go to the next world, so you never have to go back to that boss. Okay. So that's one thing at least and right, whatnot, right. but he's still there if you yeah. did want to fight Then him, maybe but... you would need to do that for like landmarks. Like you add in, but this would be very difficult, but if you're making the game where you would say like, let's say you find one of your bodies or something mm. that was part of the story where like it has a thing you can always return to that body or, or some, something like that. There is actually something like that in this game. So okay. there are two things that can bring you back from death if anything, if anything happens. Right. One, if you find the astronaut figurine, Okay, yeah, yeah. It doesn't tell you specifically. I had to figure this out that it says it won't. Well, no spoilers, bro. Shit. It, it says it won't let you go, and I'm like, what the fuck does okay. that mean? But mm -hmm. it turns out if you die once, it brings you back immediately. Right. It's an extra. It's a mushroom. Yes, yeah. and um, <clears throat> and there's one thing called a replicator, which is like a an alien technology, and it's got the shape of one of the alien beings, which is like this giant thing with horns and. Long God, arms. I hope you get to fight that. I, whatever it is, I'm so down. And you're like, you're you're standing there like that. You have to jump into this machine that's in its shape, and then it, it closes. And opens back up and you're like, 
Okay, what did that do? And then I found out the first time that once I died, I got brought back to there. Right. So it was almost like it cloned me. And then when I died, I, I restart from that point. Right, again. Right. Very so, Gantz. You wouldn't know what that means. What's that? Gantz is like an anime thing where it's a... It's always a weeb thing. It's a tough thing to explain. It's very strange. <laughs> okay. It's, it's a Gantz, guys. It's so Gantz, you know, so. yeah. Um, um, but that's, that's something. So it, it's not completely brutal. But it does, it can get to that point where you've done all this progression and you've got, also, like I said, how when you get into the game and the new area is completely different, yeah, yeah. all of the items, all of the enemies, all of the things no, are completely random. I'm a bit of a loot goblin. If I found something sick and then it was taken away from me, I would be for you, man. It's so random and you could find two parasites that are perfect. You're like, oh, let me put them yeah, on yeah, and it buffs yeah. me beautifully. Or and like then you die the at the next- The buffs can both of the freaking yeah. Yeah, you could find that, right? Now you don't have to pick up every single parasite, but if you did find two good ones and then you die in the next round, then you're like, fuck, well, I'm- and you're never going to get that back because it's all RN Jesus. Yeah. It's RN Jesus. And you have to pray every time you see that little purple thing in the disc. You're like, there's one oh, guy saying, oh, parasite. Returnal's really easy. And one guy saying Returnal is, is brutal. And they're both the same skill level. And that's yeah. the thing. I went on to, before the game came out, I was like, go to my usual place, P uh, PS5 trophies, go to Power Picks. Let me see yeah, yeah, yeah. how easy the Platinum Trophy is. And I saw it immediately. And it's like 70 to 150 hours to get the Platinum. And I was like, I'm a, a new father. Yeah. I have a YouTube channel. There's no way I can fit 100 hours into this yeah, thing. Yeah. And then I go on Twitter and one guy goes, I beat the game in 15 hours and I've got the platinum trophy. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you're probably oh, one of the Jesus. best players in the world, but you got yeah. the best run ever. Yeah. And you found all of the collectibles because collectibles randomly pop up. Fuck. See, that? that's not okay. It's all just so random. Yeah. And it's, it even says in the in the trophy guide, it's like, you can be the best player in the world. Don't matter if you're shit out of luck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's about right. Well, fair enough. But anyway, the game's fantastic. Yeah. It's running 4K uh, 60 FPS. It's ray tracing. It's got full dual sense support, which feels Sick. unbelievable. Audio. 3D audio as well. It sounds nice. amazing. Yeah. I can totally tell when there's monsters behind me and I know where everything's coming. It's fluid. The controls are great. The um the triggers, there's this alt fire where on all of your guns where it like unleashes either like a laser beam, a grenade, or something yeah, yeah, or another. Yeah. And it's so intuitive. It's your aim button. When you push it at a normal pressure, it just aims. Yeah. But then you push it a bit further and it unleashes your alt fire like your grenade and launcher or whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah. And it's so intuitive and it's so good. It feels amazing. And honestly, Everyone is sleeping on this. If any of you are asking, like Diogo did, you should make a video on it. Is the I think I should. Is this game worth seventy bucks? One hundred percent. You can obviously get it for cheaper, but yeah. this game, people were like, I don't know, I don't really know it, so Wait, I'm gonna. These guys I'm gonna are pass made gun, Are you sure? Yeah. I'm gonna pass on it. Seventy bucks. I don't know. It's not really worth it. This game is worth it. Go and play it. I'm interested in trying it for sure yeah i don't know if it's the kind of game i'd be into but i definitely want to try it at least i don't think that you'll get you want to play much further yeah, than probably the first bit yeah. but i you should try it to yeah, experience a, a true ps5 game and it might call to me it might be one of those things and i go you know what? actually there is something here i'd like to play like bloodborne and the souls games if and it stuff. could spark that you, that would be great like sakura is one because it's like something that i should like but it's the type of game that i'd not into you mm. know but Sekiro, that's exactly the sort of game I'm in. You know, like the, the, the concept. The thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this Returnal sounds like it's something for, for true gamers. And talking of true gamers, this podcast, the True Gamer Co podcast, <laughs> uh, is made possible by the uh, the $5 uh, bullies. Bullies. I'm not, like, I'm not like bullies. No. More like bullies. Yeah, not bully in the alley. Bullies. Like a bully in the alley. <laughs> Once your lunch money. Uh, <laughs> Who, who cyberbullied us into making this this podcast in particular mm -hmm. um, that that said, you know, if you don't make a podcast just 100% about gaming and also quickly talking about Superman at the very beginning. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I, I think that's actually what they said. Uh, we're going to we're gonna revolt. We're going to do a rebellion. We're going to do a mutiny. Yeah, do a mutiny. We're going to yeah. do a mutiny on you. Uh, and, and those $5 tier gamers and also... I feel like, do we shout out our sugar daddies here? We say thank you to our sugar daddies. We do say thank mm -hmm. you to our sugar daddies. Thank you, daddy, mm -hmm. for the uh, the Twitch subs as well, because we do love you. 
Yes. Who are Archie Gamers? Those people are Jeremy Horde, Sab2557, Real, Real, uh, Real Kermit Rebel. Cinema, uh, Record Friction. It would have been funny if I did it on Record Friction because they could have done a record <sighs> Damn it. scratch. Damn it. Damn it right there. Um, Adam Sonling, Isak Manny, Dan Dano, Katz Coral, Doc Nutella, Sa- Super Whale Ben, Albi Scori, Joe McCormack, Kevin Crow, and you to uh, nice, bro right there. Thank nice. you very much for joining us, bro. Um, Greg Heffley is the greatest character in all of fiction. Juicy Left Nut 69. <laughs> Benedict Clobbers, Zack Snyder's son, aka Batfan, Fishy, The Jackal, Cobra SS, Jack Nicholas, and Max H. Thank you, bro, so much for keeping the lights and mics on and cyberbullying us into this uh, this uh, podcast right That's here. That's right. And those guys are at patreon.com forward slash conversations, which I forgot to say at the beginning yes, of pimping our own exactly. stuff. Well, let me pimp it a little bit here, guys. This is the True Gamer Podcast. Uh, Coming to your eyes and ears every Saturday on YouTube.com. Kind of slash conversations. Oh, we'll yeah, explain that, that in a second. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and also on podcast services around the world. If you guys enjoy what we do here, yeah. if you love what we do, you can head over to Patreon to support us. But don't worry if you can't. We love you regardless. And you can head over to YouTube. You can like the video. Yeah, yeah. Leave all some comments because it helps us out in the YouTube algorithm. If you're an audio virgin, like us five stars. Rate us five stars on the audio Yeah, services. if you're an audio virgin <laughs> like Chris over there. Freaking but Chris. yeah, that also helps us out over there. And uh, we love you yep. in all ways and shapes and forms one last and thing like while that. we while we are shilling because yes. probably we remembered to put up the timestamp somewhere yeah. um, it, with the patreon stuff we do actually also have merch and it actually is good yes i, I like it i unironically wear our own stuff uh not because well we had to pay for it we, we did have we to actually pay for, pay for our own stuff same as you guys now the guys printed it for free they're like you know right. what? But we're doing yeah. a solid lads but, uh, like- it's actually good stuff uh, and lastly if you are one of those guys, because I appreciate it, I get it, and I always, I always feel like these guys feel left out or like they're not supporting us, like the people that can't be on Patreon or can't Twitch sub or for whatever reason, like we, we get it. Yeah. You know, like liking the video is incredible and it helps us out a lot. Leaving an actual comment where yeah. you respond to something, not like, oh, good video, guys, but like, oh, um, I, I just got Returnal and I'm playing this, or actually I'm really looking forward to Resident Evil 8, blah, blah, blah. Like an actual yeah. comment, that really helps us out a lot. And... It actually supports the channel. Uh, and lastly, on the Discord, which is the greatest Discord uh, around it, will be linked in the description below. In the reg- in the main channel, Congregations, there is actually an Amazon affiliate link. So, hypothetically, if you were going to be getting anything on Amazon anyway, if yes. you get there using our link and purchase something, then we get a small kickback. And that's another way, like liking the video and leaving a comment that's free to you, yes. uh, that supports the channel. By the way, the Amazon affiliate, bruv, yeah pretty much not worth it yeah I, do you it know takes, what it's I, not worth logging in but it's worth ha- like we're supposed to have it it's good business to have it i was gonna say it gets to the point where i i don't say it because i'm just like well, what's the point there's no yeah. point in bringing anything up in that negative up more but like, why do we even mention it because it produces so little i do want to say it's a freeway that's it, the it, reason that's why. the thing it's a freeway for you guys to support and there are dudes like sean he bought a bunch of stuff and he made sure that he was using the link and yeah. i did check and it has come through weirdly it tells uh, you it tells me it's a different price to what he actually bought and the thing is if Fucking every jeff bezos i feel like if for example i'm not saying you guys should do this this is just me and you talking here yeah um if everybody including you me and our mums bought yeah. used our link to buy absolutely everything they bought on uh amazon we'd probably be able to use that I mean, I'm like, we'd, it, we'd it be might be able to support our caffeine I say, addiction. <laughs> I was going to say, it might get us to like, we'd get monsters yeah. for free. You know, it's not a huge amount, but it, it is a way that you can support us for free. And every little and, helps, as Tesco says, the, not yes, sponsored. It does. <laughs> and I honestly can't tell you what you should buy that would help us out because somebody bought like a 170 pound gaming chair and we got like 30p from it. And then someone else bought a cooking book and we got three quid. Yeah, it's random. It's so weird. So just, you know, legit, if, if it's something that you wanted to do, it, we'll put the link somewhere for you guys to use. But but for real, the merch is actually good. Yeah, and if you're a patron at the $5 tier, you get a, a discount oh, yeah. code as well. So that'd be $5 really cool, and up, you get 15% off? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Speaking of uh, the, the guys over on YouTube who leave comments and stuff like yeah. that, we've got two guys here. Italian guy wrote in on our last episode and he said, happy birthday because it was our birthday episode I'm last so time. stupid. I was going to ask, how do you know he's Italian? How do you know he's Italian? Over Wait, the... he did the hand gestures when he I wrote. I did the hand gestures. His comments have got hand right. gestures in them. That's how I know. Um, he says, uh, happy birthday. I've been following your content for a few weeks now. It's awesome. 
funny and entertaining. He paid clearly actor. was meant to put that on a different YouTube yeah, yeah. video, right? Or he's a paid actor, for sure. Video, sure one of That's where the Amazon around. money's going. <laughs> <laughs> and also Brian Ford wrote on Rear and he goes, Hey boys, thanks for another shout out, because we like reading his comments. Out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he also wanted to give a little correction, well, a, a comment on our previous stuff. He okay. goes, two things. I want to, I think when you all talk about the ZeniMax acquisition, uh, acquisition, you tend to talk about, sort of forget who else ZeniMax owns besides Bethesda. Yeah, They have true. Id, which is Doom, yeah. Machine Games, which is Wolfenstein, Arcane, yeah. which is Dishonored and Prey, uh, just to name a couple. While I think 7.5 billion is still a little... Oh, it's overvalued for all of those still, yeah. A little high, there's more value than you give it credit for, which is which is true, right? That's there. true. However, uh, we are on the internet, and I'm not going to let something as, as minor as facts and information get in the way of my strongly held beliefs. How exactly. dare you? Exactly. Get, get out uh, of here with facts. <laughs> Come right. on now. I have a position based in ignorance. How dare you? Exactly. How dare you? Bro, it is, um, today it's May the 6th. Yeah. Which, uh, by the time this video comes out on YouTube, it'll be May the 8th. So, happy May the... F- Sixth, the fourth, be yep. with you. May the fourth be with you. That works. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, yep. Did you do anything special for Star Wars Day or anything uh, like that? Well, it's my anniversary with my chick, uh, which is useful because I, I always, I always remember Star Wars Day. Oh, okay. That's why it's useful. And then there's always another little thing on the calendar. Like, yeah, something else to do exactly. So we started <laughs> to rewatch uh, the Mandalorian. Nice, which nice, is very nice, good, nice, nice. which is good fun. Um, and then obviously afterwards, even more important was uh. Uh, Cinco de Cavill, Henry Cavill's birthday. Yes, Henry Cavill's birthday, which yeah. was immediately ruined by other WB nonsense they can have. But Henry Cavill's birthday. Yeah, exactly. Great guy, great guy. Dude, right there. Dude's 38, and this is my concern is he's 38, um, Batflex like 44 or something. Like yes. these guys are going to age out of their prime. Like they're still within their prime years to play these characters. Yes. And if we do not make the most of them, WB, mm-hmm. like stop worrying about whether alfred's black or white right <laughs> just make these guys make these movies like the movies right. we want the movies because you have you have your best cast you have your best batman ever yeah. you have your best superman ever freaking you gotta get on it you gotta yeah. get on it instead of beefing out ray fisher for being black and then and then throwing pity parties everywhere you just gotta make these freaking movies just make right? the freaking movies with what a great fucking actor standing right in front of you Anyway, should we start this podcast, start a few of the episode, the topics that we've got planned yeah, for today? Because yeah, yeah. we've got some bangers right here. Um, today's topics will include, how long has it been? It's only been 45 minutes. Ah, it's fine. It's fine. fine. Right there, right there. Um, today's topics will include how Crash Bandicoot is dead. Okay. Uh, and the announcement that Discord will be integrating with PSN. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that. I'm glad you mentioned that. And how sunset overdrive oh, is being saved by sony uh, okay interesting th- that would be right an there. interesting one so um i want to talk first of all about the playstation discord integration yeah so uh first this- point get fucked microsoft <laughs> <laughs> let me set up the yeah, the yeah. story for those of you guys yeah. that don't know one day randomly I was playing on PlayStation and I had Discord next to me and I was like, man, wouldn't it be great if PlayStation had Discord integration? Yeah. And I thought I'd tweet that fact out. And then immediately we got uh, we got a notification. So we got news that there are rumors that Microsoft is in talks to <laughs> yeah. acquire yeah. Discord. Yeah. Basically because I tweeted that out. Microsoft saw my yeah, tweet and they were course. like, now we're going to script. We're yeah, going to we show it. We know Phil Spencer's it. following. He's following the one of his fake silently, accounts. Yeah. You know, I think he goes by the name of Ashtonator or something, something like that. Something like that. Um, anyway, I'm like, yeah, so they did that and the rumors were going around. They were going to yeah. buy them for $10 billion. Still overpaying. Ridiculous I love Discord, amounts of but money. that's too much. Way too much money. And then those talks fell through. Yes. Apparently that wasn't going to happen. Thank God. The talks are off everything. And then a week later, we get this news yeah. here. Yeah. That Discord has, uh, sorry, uh, PlayStation has bought a minority stake in Discord. And there will be Discord integration with PSN coming up in 2022. Yeah. That's all the information that we got. It was a statement from Jim Ryan. Uh, that's all they said. How do you feel about that? It, kind of conflicted, Go honest, on. honestly. Uh, on the one hand, yeah, uh, I'm glad that Microsoft can't just bulldoze their way through things with money. Mm-hmm. right? And this is and my real point here about Microsoft is that I think in a lot of cases, they 
try and buy their way out instead of producing good stuff. Yes. That's the impre- that's how it feels to me as like on the consumer end of things. It's the one thing they have really is money. So they're like, we'll use right. money to overcome every obstacle, which can happen. Yeah. <laughs> on the other hand, we already have the PSN chat party system. Now, it was better on the PS4 yes. UI stuff, but I can already chat to like 15 guys if I want to. Yeah. Although... Being able to do certain things like, you know how you have your PlayStation set up with uh, Twitter? Yes. So you, you can put out your, like, if you make get any trophies and stuff like that. Like, I'm sure there's a cool way to integrate that with Discord. That might be interesting. Yeah. Um, making it so that maybe, maybe it'd be useful for streaming because we do stream through PS5s a lot. Yep, yep, Where yep, yep. if we can have audio running through the PS5, that might make things easier on, like, our computers, yeah, hypothetically. Yeah. But other than that, I don't really see the point. I don't know how I don't know how it'll be good because there's no way I'm typing on my freaking yeah. PS5. I'm not using the thing, and then if I'm going to use a keyboard, I'm not going to attach it to the PlayStation. I'm going to use my laptop. Yeah, but maybe it'll be great. Hopefully, hopefully, Sony has something in mind where they're like, we we actually not only want you on the platform, but we have something for you. We want yeah. you to, to fill a role. Well, that's the thing. I imagine while this probably is like a, a joint symbiotic relationship where they're both going to get something out of yes, this, probably. I have to imagine that Discord wanted sony to give some money to them yeah. and probably had a few ideas to pitch to them i have a few ideas of things they can do to make things better yeah <clears throat> one thing when you want to find somebody to play something uh say for example like back in destiny i used to go through searching all of the lfg websites to try and find yeah. someone to do the run of the raid or something like that yeah it always used to be okay the website is the place to go and they would link you to either like a discord server or they would yeah, link yeah, you to yeah. another post where you'd have to type it's in your random, name like it's a goose hunt exactly yeah. it's really ridiculous with this there are discord servers set up for trophy yeah. hunters yeah, yeah, yeah. for D- D- uh, destiny lfg players and stuff like that if it's integrated with your playstation that's going to make that very easy as well to yep. get to because you don't have to go searching you could be like okay just send that to my ps5 and that's already there it's really yeah. ready for you also for people like us, like you said about the, like, if we're streaming or something like that, we could set up a dedicated chat for the streams. Yep. Jump in on that on PlayStation. That could be a cool way. Yep. Crossplay. Right now, there is no way to talk to somebody. That's a big... If they're on another platform. That's a big point. Everyone has Discord, and that's completely open to anyone, so that could be cool. Although, um, I, And that'll make that pretty easy. For, in that case, I want Microsoft to have Discord integration. And that's the th- it goes back to that thing you said at the beginning where Microsoft being able to bulldoze it, uh, their way and buy everything. Yeah. So we, if Microsoft had made this purchase, it's likely that PlayStation wouldn't have seen the light of day to a Discord. Yeah. With PlayStation getting involved in it, it doesn't eliminate uh, Microsoft from getting involved. It's just that there is going to be a dedicated app for PlayStation yeah, and yeah. Microsoft still you have mean, the opportunity to come along and say, hey, mean, Discord, make one for us as well. To be clear, which is you mean... pro-consumer for everyone. Yeah, you, you mean the way in which they went about it, which is that Sony wants Discord integration, Microsoft were looking to purchase Discord, so it was Microsoft exclusive. That's exactly. the main difference. Yeah. Exactly. So that's a, that's a pro point right there. Microsoft can still go to them and say, yeah. hey, we'll make an app for you as well. Um so yeah, that's I, I think this is really cool. And I do love how I pitched this as well, that I was like, I brought this into existence. Everyone of can course thank me. Yeah, you're welcome. I put the idea you're into the internet. universe. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're welcome, internet, for that. Thank you guys for your appreciation and your kind words. Thank you yeah, so that, much. Yeah, right that's there. a good idea for the crossplay for sure. Because otherwise you sometimes have to use the in-game party chat stuff, which is not always very good and then doesn't sometimes for some reason doesn't like to talk cross system yeah. even though it's supposed to be into the game it doesn't like going cross system which i've noticed a few times even pc to playstation or pc to xbox it can be dodgy yeah so um yeah so you know hopefully hopefully this resolves a lot of stuff and if it's one thing that our laptops can do less which is have the audio running through the playstation yep and coming out as game audio or like in that same stream. It would make things much more streamlined, right? Right, it would make things more streamlined. And for some reason, Discord is kind of a resource hog. It's kind of like a Chrome yeah. in a way. Yeah. I guess there's a lot going on in it, at yeah. least. With di- with a Chrome, it's like, you're a fucking browser. Yeah. Stop doing other things. Even with a million tabs open, like, <laughs> you, you should just chill. Yeah, just chill out. Um, I did put this... Uh, this topic is going to be one of the things yeah, we talk okay, about okay, on okay. Uh, Discord and stuff like that. And on Patreon, Jack Nicholas writes in and he goes, Time to come clean, Eddie. Why are you always right? We need to know how you do this. 
guys, I can't reveal my secret, okay, here just for anybody. As the Joker says, as his father said to him, if you're good at something, don't do it for free. So, you know. Right. Feel right. free to give me the money for that. That's uh, that's correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ultimately, and I feel like I've been proved to be right a lot as well. Yeah. Um, proof, Microsoft is run by Hydra. It, that is true. Yeah. See? Proof called right it. there. Called it in season one of uh, WandaVision. <laughs> <laughs> Got right there. Um, yeah, I want to get the, um, the the main topics for the for the news out of the way. And there are a couple of people who wrote in questions about Returnal. Yeah. And I didn't want to talk about Returnal for too long, so we're going to push that on for a little bit like that. But that that's the Discord integration with PSN, just so everybody knows right now. Gaming. Um, the next topic. We are one month away from E3. I feel like 2020 really dragged. Yes. And 2021 hasn't changed all that much. And that's gone way too fast. Yes. Strange, We're right? We're almost halfway through 2021. And um, that feels like it's not okay to me. It's just flown by. Ridiculous, isn't it? Flown by. I don't Blast even know how that happened. Blasted past us, yeah. Um... So we're one month away. Uh, if you remember, E3 announced they're going to be doing a digital-only event. Yeah. Uh, everyone's uh, invited. It's completely free to watch. And they said they've already secured a bunch of people already for their uh, for their presentation. Yeah. One of those people noted... Well, so, it wasn't us. Oh, it wasn't, so they can't have had anyone good. No one important, obviously. Right, if yeah. they had us, then they would have been fine. Yeah, we could so have hosted it for you. Small, small news. Yeah. Exactly. One of the people they confirmed was uh, Konami. <laughs> Sick. Super great. However, Konami have come out to announce they're pulling out of E3. Oh, thank God. E3 uh, <laughs> saved, boys. We can just start this video. E3 saved. <laughs> it goes, uh, after confirming their participation, uh, they're pulling out of E3. They say due to timing. Now, they were very professional about this. They came out and they were like, we completely support E3 and absolutely believe that E3 is doing an amazing job and this year will be amazing and we can't wait to see them next yeah. year. But we're pulling out of E3 due to timing of our announcements for our video games. They said, we have some announcements to make over the next couple of years, but we're not ready to make them at E3, which is next month. So over the next couple of months, sorry, not years. But and they're not available. They're not ready to make their announcement how, next month. How does that affect sending some like presenters? Well, that's the thing. They they don't have anything to show. They're claiming that's what they're saying. Like they have some stuff, but it's not show ready yet. Like give it another two months in the can. That's what they're saying. Microsoft doesn't seem to care. If Microsoft can do it. You guys can do it. Just say that you guys went on a trip to Iceland and uh, you right. take some pictures and stuff like yeah, that. It's nothing. And, uh, and show games a... that you've already shown before and exactly yeah. pop a title and that's all you need, guys. That's all you need. I just feel like you know one. You know, if you don't have anything to show, you probably shouldn't be there. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I, they did kind of make a big deal about Konami being there. Which I didn't really get. Like, not to say they don't make good games. The only thing that made people, the only thing, the reason why I think they did it was because they were like, "Oh, this will get the the Silent Hill stuff going, yeah. or or Metal yeah. Gear Solid yeah. uh, remakes and stuff like yeah. that." But of course, it won't. But now they've pulled that. It's like, well, that's just nothing. Then there's nothing there, <laughs> right? So, and even the thing is as well, like if you were, if you did have something and you were ready, you weren't quite ready to announce it, you could just show a bunch of the art and be like. Guys, we're making Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. And here's, here's the, you know, we don't have anything to show you. It's not ready yet. And we're not going to show you an, un an unpolished product. Um, you know, we're not, we're not 343. Three. Um, this isn't Halo Infinite here. So <laughs> here's just some of the concept art of some Third. of the stuff that we're thinking of, that, yeah. that's going to be in the game. No spoilers, but here it is, you know. Sam Fisher's returning. <laughs> the only place Sam Fisher will actually show up <laughs> is in a totally different game. I, uh, I'm conflicted with this because it was a joke. I, okay, <laughs> don't freaking at me. Don't come at me. Right. I'm I'm conflicted by this because I admire them saying, okay, we're not going to be there because we've got nothing to show yeah. or it's not ready yet. Yep. But also, this is Konami. They've shown shown... old build, man. It's fine. That's fine, isn't it? It's, uh, it's from January, guys. Don't worry about it. Get but they... fricked. But this is Konami. They've shown no interest in the most recent years about gaming because yeah. ever since uh, Kojima left. Yeah. They shouldn't care then. They should just be like, oh, this will bring up our investment numbers. Right. Our share numbers will give a bump. That's all we care about. 
Anyway, so they've pulled out, and that's one of the, the big names that was in E3, yeah. um, which is unfortunate. It uh, means we're not going to get to see anything from them. I know Josh Anderson was a v- <laughs> very big Metal Gear fan, and he's yep. he's very upset right now. You okay there, bro? <laughs> I need to learn to drink, probably. Nope. Yeah, you need to. It's oh, too God. bad you haven't been alive for 30 odd years to, to do that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a difficult skill, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that's happening there. Um, Crash Bandicoot is dead. Yeah, what was that one about? So the comp- the dev house, Toys for Bob, yeah. is the name of their dev house that makes Crash Bandicoot. They made the last Crash Bandicoot and they have been moved completely over to be working on Call of Duty Warzone. Which means now every Activision owned proper big studio that isn't like tied to like Blizzard or anything yeah. like that is now working on Warzone. That's they're so- doing nothing but Warzone now. It's all <laughs> Call of Duty. What genuine question? How much stuff does Warzone have left? Like, I get I understand like bug fixes, hot patching, you know, stuff that like maintenance stuff. But how can it need that big of a team to do this stuff? Because the only new stuff coming in, as far as I can tell, is either character models, I guess, which I don't think they brought any new ones out. It could be wrong. I don't play it. And like gun skins and maybe a new gun. So like balancing and... This is the thing. This is guns, very like- much that we're not in the in the the, the wheelhouse of their, their thing. We're not in the, the, the war zone crowd. But people are... People are playing Warzone. Yeah. And recently there was a big thing where like <coughs> they did a live event a bit like um Fortnite does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where people were like, if you want to be here for this live event, and they dropped a nuke on the town that they yeah, were on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was like a video that popped up and there was a whole thing. I think they're going full on. They've got enough players as well. The player base is there. I think they get something like a hundred million con- 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 uh, yeah. players and one all the time. I think that's what they're doing. They're just going the full Fortnite route where they're just coming up with narratives all the time. The thing, Fair play to them if it makes them money. I haven't played it. I've been meaning to play it because I know Rob, friend of the show, he plays it and you and some of the boys play, play it a bit. bit of it sometimes, yeah. I've never played a game uh, of it. I feel like, and this is probably from complete ignorance, but like Fortnite, it made sense in a way because they could do anything they wanted. Like, in one of the events, the whole world just gets deleted, and yeah. anyone was there, they ended up in space, and the whole new world was, like, generated in front of them, like a mini Big Bang. Yeah. Because it's Fortnite, it's, like, basically a cartoon. Yeah. You know, you can do whatever you want, it could be ridiculous, things can fall from space, and aliens can attack, and mech suits can, you know, whatever. Yeah. But COD is very much in the real world, right? The real world. Yeah. You can't have, like, aliens invade. Hey, some, they must be doing something, right? Because it's been going so popular, so well for so long now. It does and, seem like a really good game. Yeah, and people are still playing it, so it must be some really good draw to it. Maybe yeah. because it's more realistic, that's a it's a break from Fortnite. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But the well, main takeaway from this is that we're not going to get another Crash Bandicoot game then. Yeah, that seems really stupid to me. Isn't the new the new one did really well though? New one did really well. The old one did really well. The Insane yeah, Trilogy yeah, did yeah, really yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. The the new one's done really well as well. It's just not live service money. Live service money is insane. That's a good point. And yeah. I think you know, Activision, we know, is a like they any care company, about you. They're pro consumer for gamers by gamers for gaming. Listen, pro consumer. That's only Microsoft. Okay, only right. Microsoft care about us. Um, they saw the check and they were like, okay, this is this is how much yeah. money we're making. We're and making. I bet the devs money saw over the here. pay rise if they said like, well, you know, plus here's extra money because you're making a well, service it, with extra money. It's funny you should say that. One of the main guys that worked on the previous one, the uh, the the Crash Bandicoot Four, yeah, he left. He was like, it's not my passion to work on Call of Duty. So, yeah. well, fair enough. Fair enough to the guy, right? That I kind of respect. Yeah. Well, I say I, respect, but in fairness, if he's like, look, that's not what I do. Yeah. Then I get. I guess I respect someone going where to make something that they want to make, yeah. rather than being in a job. Because this is this is exactly my critique of games journalists, yes. which is that they're writers and journalists who happen to be in gaming. They're not gamers yes. in game journalism, right? Um, which has its pros and cons. Like gamers come with a lot of preconceived notions and opinions and stuff. Like I get that, but I think the issue is that most of the people in the space are journalists. Mm. who are in gaming right they're not game journalists they're not gamers in journalism and, all yeah. stuff. and so in in that in one sense i kind of respect it in the other sense i mean well i don't know it's, it's interesting that's interesting yeah i i think it i think it's quite cool of the guy to yeah. just be like 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, this isn't what I signed up for. Yeah, you know? it's not the kind I'm of out. game I want to make. Yeah, and besides, there's plenty more places to work out there, um, including there was a. I'm going to bring this up now because yeah, it's come good up as games a, dev. You're not going to be struggling. Yeah, you're not going to be looking for work, really, are you? Um, a bunch of the. Uh, so what was it? Let me just have a look here. Yeah, so. Google yeah. Stadia got a bunch of developers to make a bunch of uh, exclusive games. Okay. Um, a ton more uh, developers have left uh, Google Stadia's development studios to go work with Jade Raymond on that brand new oh, ha- yeah, Haven yeah. studio that's, that's making that PlayStation exclusive game as well. That'll so be interesting. Going after your dream is 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 great. But what I do love is that there are still people out there that are like Google Stadia simps. And they're still like Google Stadia is great, guys. That it just seems needs weird to, to me. It just needs to go. And I'm like, you guys don't see it, but even the devs inside are seeing that Google yeah. Stadia's writing's on the wall, and it's going to go the way of Daydream, Google Plus, Chromecast Audio, all this other stuff that Google just sunsetted after the thing, how crap it was. The thing I think they're not seeing is that Google does this a lot, which I respect. Some look, Google is definitely evil corp as well. Yeah. But they do do some good stuff, which is, you know, like Google um, Fiber, yeah, Google Chrome. You know, the reason that they made those things is because they saw a need in the market, right? And I think they see a need in the market with Stadia. I think they do. Yeah. And I think the fact is the market can't fill its own need right now. Yeah. The internet infrastructure isn't there. The speed infrastructure isn't there. The demand isn't there yet. I think the Stadia model probably coming. Yeah, like, someone's going to crack it. Someone's going to crack it. And I think it might be closer to Microsoft with their xCloud thing. Maybe. Because yeah, yeah, of the integration the cl- yeah. integration with everything else. Yeah. It's like, if you have Game Pass, then you have all of these games already. And it's right. like, oh, that's great. I yeah, can yeah, play yeah. It on my xCloud. And I've got these games on my on my PC or I on also my think console and stuff like that. That, you know, these things, everybody thinks, oh, it's going to happen in the next few years. Times it by 10. Stadia is probably the thing in 20, 25 years. Mm, I know you, mm. I actually used to think 10 years, but that was a few years ago when yeah. I, and internet infrastructure hasn't changed really. Nope. It's really going to need, you know, 4K plus or IMAX style movies to be the thing on internet, on like streaming services. And then people realize, yeah, I can't deal with five down and two up. Yeah. You know? So anyway, I think, I think Stadia is one of those things that it is too early. Mm. it probably will be the way it goes but once all this infrastructure basically once they go these servers are really great but the cooling's too expensive it's cheaper and more economical and easier to stick them in space yeah you know once you're having server stacks in space for the <laughs> for the free cooling then i think we're we're on to something right yeah uh because there there is a surprising cost that comes to just running servers yeah that heat trying to just bring it down yeah. right so and yeah. place you have to put it as well, real estate and stuff like that. Um, the next thing, there's a whole bunch of crap that's come out with this Epic versus Apple court case. Okay, I thought we weren't going to hear from that for a while, but I didn't realize that it, it had development. It's all come up basically like there was a, like eight months of of legal paperwork there yep, to do, yep, 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 yep. and then now there's actual conversations about what all that paperwork and all the evidence is. Yeah, um, it's really funny because there's there's m- parts in it where it's talking about all these other companies that have revenue shares of certain things, yeah. and Epic's trying to argue that Apple has a monopoly on the market, even though. It's not correct because a monopoly isn't illegal, yeah. but how you your monopoly affects the market is what's illegal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like if you if it's adversely affecting consumers, that's the issue, which it's not. So I don't know how they're going to win that. But anyway, um, Xbox join forces with uh, Epic, yeah, and they're lowering the they're thinking about lowering the the split revenue split of their uh, their games that they sell on PC. Okay, and it's possible that this might extend to consoles. However, when they were reached out to a, when they reached out to them, like journalists reached for out comments, to them to ask yeah. for comment, they said they have no plans to do that. Interesting. Interesting, right? It's, yeah. it's all just strange. It's all just developing like that. Now that's I mean, all they're, going they're on. They're pro-consumer for consumers for gamers exactly, by gaming right? and gamers gamers words. Keep when it, gaming safe. The only reason why the revenue split so low on PC is because it's an open market and yeah. they can go elsewhere if they want to. Yeah. But because it's on Xbox, they won't do it because you have no choice. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, yeah. but they're pro consumer though. So, okay. Pro consumer for gamers by gamers for gaming. Exactly. Um, they're doing one really shitty thing, I have to say. Okay. If my, Microsoft put in their, in their wording there is that you can get a 12% cut on console if 
you make your game available for PC, console, and xCloud all together. Then we'll give you the preferential rate of but of then, like profit sharing. But and then stuff it's like not that. on console. Then it's not. It's not on PC. It's, it's on yeah, PC and console and cloud. You and have to make game it on everything and, right there. And I'm. It's kind of like holding their money ransom. It's yeah. a little bit of a shitty tactic. Anyway, that's just some little tidbits that came up. That's not really too interesting and whatnot. But there is one thing that is interesting. Okay. Do you want to hear yes. a Last of Us Part 2 review from Xbox? No. <laughs> this is genuinely a genuine review from the internal st- internal uh, departments of Xbox of Last of Us Part 2. Okay, I actually have some questions. So I, wa- I want to hear what I have to say. Go on. My question is... Is this them evaluating their competition and trying to break down the recipe so that they can finally make a game that seems to sell? Essentially. Story-focused, character-driven, not even very open-world RPG. Essentially, yeah. So let me read out a little bit of what they... Well, that should be good then. That's the thing. It's it's written quite well. It's written quite nicely. Okay. I'll read out what they say. So they say... Um, The Last of Us Part 2 sets a new bar for what we hope to achieve going into the new generation of consoles. That's complete bullshit, but please continue. Well, it's what they hope to achieve. Okay. This is what we say we're going to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, we we think, it's like, imagine it's made by somebody who then passes on that information to the people who are going to make the the games and consoles. It's like, this is what you guys should do, in my opinion. This is what you should strive to be. Last of Us Part 2 is exceedingly rare, is an exceedingly rare video game where it accomplishes in moving forward the art of narrative storytelling in video games as a medium ultimately outweighs, uh, as a medium ultimately outweighs whether or not everyone else likes it or not because uh, if everyone has fun playing it that said we loved it uh having a having a great time playing it and finding ourselves still thinking about characters and stories even after finishing a playthrough uh they go on they say the visual quality and attention to detail in last of us part two is absolutely best in its class in basically every area and except sword fights (laughs) yeah they don't have very good sword fights actually the melee combat's pretty good Yeah. yeah um an overall presentation is significantly ahead of any other any of the other teams that are producing console and PC. And he goes on, we are frequently stunned by the quality of the game's visuals. So something that sadly seldom uh, happens happens these days. It's even more impressive considering that the game features two separate player characters with different groups of allies and different locations, yeah. along with flashback sequences uh, taking place years before. And running on tech from 2013. Exactly. And it goes on and on. And it's just praise after praise after praise for, for Naughty Dog's work right here. Um yeah so it's a review a proper genuine review from xbox yeah. of last of us part two we never get to see this kind of stuff but so, i'm just like that was interesting what would be really interesting is seeing like an actual an actual xbox like an one of the internal reviews that yeah. they did where they were where they actually break it down and say okay what is it in the mechanics that's good why is this doing good like because of, of course they have um you know rigged units so that you can pull stuff from it and try and rip the code and mm. all that shit right and see what it's actually doing like modders do that all the time yeah i'd love to actually see the actual like the the dev report on like why is the game good what do they, what have they done that's so interesting blah, blah blah all that stuff i think what's really interesting there probably is one of those out there guaranteed yeah yeah this is probably just more yeah. of like a, they, hey, you'd this never release that because it's literally doing something you're not supposed to be doing it's, it's breaking multiple i'm yeah. pretty sure multiple laws yeah the interesting thing, and I think a lot of people are going to read that and, and take that, whether or not people will like the game, that specific line, and be like, see, they said the game was shit, blah, blah, The game's brilliant. They said they liked it as well. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. I think what I mean is I think people reading that are going to take it and just because it's yeah. cool to hate The Last of Us 2. The game is brilliant. Yeah. And if they use that as the bar for some new IP, Yeah. I think Xbox can finally get back in the race. Yeah. And I want them to, man. I do I as freaking well. want them to. I thought this was super interesting because this came out as part of the leaked documents from the, yeah. uh, the, the court case and stuff like that. Yeah. And this is something that definitely goes on behind the thing, but we never thought about it. Yeah. And we never get to see it. Crucially, we never get to see it. Yeah. And I thought it was just 
it was just so interesting to see like Xbox because they, they this isn't going to go out anywhere so they don't have to bullshit anybody yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't have to craft the wording so as not to make themselves look bad yeah. this is going to be internal be blunt and honest with us so we can make the best decision going forward yeah. and they were just like it's fucking phenomenal well, it's this because- is a great game and fucking hell they've got a, a great studio here Sony are killing it it's because Xbox seems so tone deaf yeah. in its public facing messaging yeah. which is oh we're for the games blah blah but we have no games the games that we have are subpar when you compare them to things like Ghost of Shima The Last of Us right how smooth they run how beautiful they are how well how optimized they are how good the story is um, how good the narrative storytelling the visual storytelling all this stuff and yet here they are saying well this is the best place for gamers but that's the line they have to say they're a company yeah. right they can't admit they fucking suck <laughs> or they're doing something wrong yeah they're really they're really underserving they can only focus on their strengths which is like the number one place for backwards compatibility and all the largest list of games all that stuff's true it's just nothing anyone wants to play right yeah. so it makes sense they would have this review and it makes sense that they would see that it's great i'd love to see the one although i know i always talk about it, but i'd love to see what they say about ghost of tsushima yeah because if they look at these games and say, okay, Last of Us 2, Ghost of Tsushima, um, you know, a bunch of these different, like Days Gone, you know, a bunch of these exclusives and say, okay, what are things they all have in common? God of War, right? How does the story develop? What's the story like? What are the, what's the combat mechanics like? What's you the... know that's in there somewhere. They're doing all right. this kind of like testing to... And now, let's take a brilliant concept and then try and, not try and fit it in to the model, but like, Take a brilliant concept and then produce it in this way. Yeah. Third person, narrative focus, character driven, RPG. Let's get this style of combat in. Let's let's really make sure that it runs as smoothly as possible. Like I saw something interesting. Apparently, um, um, what am I trying to say here? I've completely lost it. Apparently, uh, frick. We we spoke about it earlier. What's that frigging game? Commander Shepard, it's totally gone from and Mass my head. Effect. Mass Effect. How did I forget Mass Effect? <laughs> How the I Mass Effect guy I forgot know. Mass Effect. It's completely fake gone. fan, guys. Fake it's fan. Gone. I don't want to listen to what well, you're saying. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition will run at 120 FPS at 4K on the Xbox Series X. Yeah. But now, the way I feel like the title was worded very specifically, <laughs> and they said it says while it runs at 60 FPS 4K on yeah. the ps5 yeah i don't think that means that the ps5 can't run it higher i think it they have chosen to make sure it runs at this limit yeah it's limit it's ma- it's capped but it, it's like a steady 60 all the way through whereas likely it can get up to 120 but it can also dip below 60 yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that tends to be what that means but that means that obviously the hardware is there, which we know we know the series x is a serious piece of kit yeah so the hardware is there you can do high frame rates you can do 4k Take some of that intricate um, optimization. I'm not from Sony, but take that approach and really make this thing run to the absolute best of its abilities on your platform and give us a great story with some great characters. You know know the recipe. That's not a secret. It's not a secret to anybody what the recipe is. Father and daughter or father and child, right? Third person, good melee combat. Yep. Interesting story. Do it. Just do it. Just, just do it. I uh, I think they've they've got the message. They uh. I hope so, man. I would love to see not just because because in our in my opinion, Xbox future rests on how good Fable is, and maybe. I think I don't think anyone really cares about Halo Infinite. At this point, in my my impression is that a bad Halo Infinite isn't going to make it or break it for Xbox. Halo's kind of a dead franchise. It feels that way to me. If it's amazing, it will be good. If it sucks, meh, because it's been written off since Halo 4 and 5. What it is, is it's the, it's the Microsoft narrative. If it sucks, it's like another dead game, another bad yeah. game from Microsoft. Well, actually, well, you know, who the hell cares? One more you know? game you can play on Microsoft. It there sucks, but it's one more game one added more to game. the list. The biggest list of games you can One play. more game that's meh, you know, let's say that I could pass on that. Right. I, I don't need to play this one, no problem. And But if it's great, then it could do great right. wonders for them, which I do think is going to be great. I, I hope it is. I'd love to see a great Halo Infinite, a great Fable, and then a great brand new title. Yeah. Forget Elden Ring, frick that. But like, let's see this. Like, like you said, you said they maybe have got the message now. Yeah. I don't know if they have. It feels to me like Microsoft don't doesn't understand that they can't just do things the way they want to do it. Yeah. You have to fit to your market. 
because they do have fuck you money. Yep. But hopefully, man, like if they would make a great game in this vein, it doesn't, and it doesn't have to compete with The Last of Us or God of War or, doesn't or have to. Ghost of Tsushima. It needs to be its own thing and just prove that it can be done. Yeah. That, well, not that it can be done, that they can do it. Prove to us that Xbox is a place where new titles, new story, new stories can be told really well. Yeah. And suddenly I might have a reason to buy an Xbox. Speaking of Xbox games. Yeah. Sunset Overdrive, which was one of the yes, uh, yeah, first yeah, yeah, yeah. Xbox exclusives. It looked a lot of fun as well. I never played it, but it looked fun. It did look a lot of fun. And this was the general narrative with a lot of people. It was like, oh my God, that looks really cool. That looks really awesome. But then not many people played yeah, it. Yeah. And that's the reason why Insomniac went back to yeah. Sony and then made Ghost of Tsushima. Wait, no, no Sonic. Sorry, definitely no. not Ghost of Tsushima. No, sorry. That's the that's second punch right there. And then they went and made Spider-Man yeah, and yeah, so yeah. and so on. And now they're owned by owned by Sony. Um, PlayStation recently filed for a patent for Sunset Overdrive. Okay. Which could mean that Sunset Overdrive is coming back on the PlayStation. That could be interesting. This was reported by Nibel on Twitter, a very like, reliable sort of uh, leaker. He comes yeah. up with a lot of information. Not confirming anything, and also because it's a, um, it's a pattern, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to do anything, anything with it. Yeah. It just means they're holding yeah. the name and whatnot. It's owned by um, Insomniac, but Sony's also put money down on it, which sort of lends more theory to that they're going to do something with it. But here's something interesting. Somebody else replied to his, his tweet. Yeah. Showing a list of games that are coming out from various different um, publishers and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's got here, Sunset Overdrive, Refreshed Edition. Okay. Which, and then also, Sunset Apocalypse. And Sunset Refreshed Edition looks like it's going to be like a re, re, uh, remade version of the original one yeah, that yeah, was yeah. done. Just so people can actually play it this time. Because uh, it's not on an Xbox One that nobody bought. Um and it's apparently going to be available on PS4, on Xbox Studios, Xbox Games, stuff like that, wherever it's going to be. Yeah. But Sunset, and then they might tease Sunset Apocalypse, which will be the next game in yeah, the franchise, yeah, yeah. and it'll be a PS5 exclusive game. These are all just rumors at the moment, but imagine a world where Xbox gets Insomniac, this fantastically great developer. Yeah. Gets them to make a game, it fails and blows up in their faces, and Sony has to rescue them from from the edge of death, and then also revive their franchise and give them the funding to to make it and and bring it back into the world. Using a Sony analogy, this really feels like Sony's Kratos and uh, Xbox is whoever the freaking guy is at the beginning. <laughs> you know, doesn't realize he's not hot shit. Yeah, you know, and it's always Kratos saving the day. For the record, I don't want that to. And Dan. I, I just, it, he hates I know, you right now. He hates yeah, good fucking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not that. Like it's because I want a, I want an actual Microsoft. You know, I want a Microsoft back in the days when back in the 360 days when they were making Gizzle when they were making Halo and these were some of the yeah. best games ever made at the time. Ever made at the time. Halo is one of the things that kicked off MLG. Right, when it, when it was possible to really do it, and it wasn't just like Warcraft and uh, Starcraft and stuff. Yeah, you know. It was Halo that kicked it off, not Call of Duty. Yeah. Right? And that that is a version of the world that I want back. I want to, I want to need to get both consoles because there's incredible stuff to play on both. Because there's great stuff to play all around, right? Right. However, it does suit our current bias, which is Sony is the big winner always. Yep. And uh, I think it'd be funny for Sony to have all the best stories, but all the best fun games as well. Mm. Um, so you have things like, well, Crash which is, I guess, no longer. No longer. Then, Rest like, in your, peace. Your sunset Rest in peace. overdrives, which... Almost knocked oh, everything over there. At least your bubble heads are going. Yeah, it's going mad right there. Good stuff. Um, but Sunset Overdrive looked like... What's that other game that it reminds me of? Saints Row? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It looked like a, a kind of Saints Row-y kind of game. So you go to, like, PlayStation specifically for silly games. Yeah. For fun games. And then you know. Do you know what I uh, what I think Sunset Overdrive? I haven't played Sunset Overdrive, Overdrive just for the for the yep. record right there. Um, I think it's gonna be very much like the feeling, the movement. It's gonna be very much like Ratchet and Clank. Really, I've seen gameplay of both of them, and the way that it floats and the traversalness, and then the mm. the shooting while moving feels very Ratchet and Clanky. So 
it'd be interesting to play if if this thing turns out to be a thing where they bring yeah, it out yeah, on yeah. PS5 and then we go, let's try it out and see what's going. This feels like Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> I just wanted to say this because because it, it, I forgot to mention it at the time when you brought up Ratchet and Clank. One of the reasons as well, I'd been saying Ratchet and Clank is the first PS5 exclusive game and we'd, not only it's because we wrote off Returnal because it was like from the guy, the game was from the guys that made that Resogun game, right? What? So there was definitely a portion of that. But there's also, it feels to me like um, Ratchet and Clank is is going to be exploring the architecture of the PS5's SSD in a way that re, um, not Resogun, in a way that Returnal wouldn't. Right, Returnals are re- I I don't know. That's the thing. Again, it just seems we'll that. Talk way. a little bit about that when we get to the comments and stuff. But like because that. of the like those portals and the worlds are there and the instant rendering between locations and stuff, that that's exactly the sort of stuff that the PS5 can do. That say, as an example, the Xbox Series X couldn't do or couldn't do as well because it has to do it linearly while the thing is doing like the spider web yeah and that's the thing i want to explore about the ps5 so that's also one of the reasons that in my head ratchet and clank is the first ps5 exclusive whereas it seemed to me not knowing in complete ignorance that returnal is still relatively speaking a a linear game that's what we thought because we hadn't seen that much from returnal and what we did just concept stuff really it was shrouded in mystery because i guess they were trying to keep it that way and it was like okay so it's like shooting and it's like moving uh, it looks kind of fun but uh, that's really it but now that i've played it it's completely blown my mind um speaking of ratchet and clank this time last week as of recording yeah there was a state of play a Ratchet and Clank state of play. Yeah, I missed that. I, and people have asked me, have I seen the footage? And I haven't. Oh my God, really? Well, I know, in fairness. You know you want to get it. I know I'm getting it. Yeah. I know I am I am a Ratchet and Clank fan. I know I like Ratchet and Clank. Mm. My opinion on the franchise is they don't make bad ones. They just make ones that you prefer over the others. Yeah. And it's PS5. So I know, I'm already bought in. I don't need to see that it, uh, let me guess, it's gorgeous. It runs smoothly. It looks like fun. The combat looks good. You know, like, I know. Yes, I'm a ra- yes, yeah, yes, right. yes, I'm yes. A ratchet and clank. So I haven't seen the footage. Yeah. A bit of me is like, I should, but I already know I want the game. I already know I'm going to enjoy the game. It was absolutely beautiful. The footage was fantastic. We got to see about the female uh, Lombax, whatever they yeah, call it. I'm like, that's I'm not, right. This is my first uh, Ratchet and Clank game I'm yeah. buying, so excuse me for that. Um, River, so got to see whatever the, her name is. Yeah, River, that's yeah. her name. People want to bust her River or something. Uh, <laughs> Fuck's sake. Um, we we saw the ray tracing effects on the like puddles and the yeah, yeah, yeah. the world. There was one shot where this rivet character went up to this this ledge, and you got to see the world that they built in Ratchet and Clank, which yeah. is one of these like futuristic yeah, yeah, worlds. Yeah, yeah. They did what CDPR couldn't do with Cyberpunk. Oh wait, is it alive? There's actually people there. An alive, futuristic, living world. Like yeah. she just rocks up to it, and you just see cars flying by, tall buildings, yeah, yeah, yeah. lights everywhere, people going around. I'm like, they did a cyberpunk. This is this is what cyberpunk couldn't yeah. do. This is, and then on top of that, the loading times. There was one scene specifically where um, oh, I bet it's ridiculous. He just hopped into a portal, and it was like he did a backflip, and then the flip landed him in the next world. And right. I was like. Because this is, and this is the thing that I think people overlooked. Because it's not just the PS5's architecture. These guys have been have been making Ratchet and Clank, which is a PS PlayStation exclusive, mm. since I want to say two thousand and three. Yeah. What they do is PS exclusives. Yeah. So if any game was ever gonna run smoothly on a PlayStation anywhere, it was gonna be Ratchet, a Ratchet and Clank or, or similar. Not that no one else can do it. Like Naughty Dog's a perfect example, but that is what they do. Yeah. So. My, I, get, I guess my question is, because I haven't really seen the footage. Go on. Interested? Very. Okay, cool. I was interested just before, just before getting, I was like, I think I'm going to play this because it's a PS5 game. Yeah. But now I'm going to play this because it looks like a really fun Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. And it's a PS5 game. Right, right, right. I think it's going to be great. I cool. think it's going to be so cool. Cool. I can't wait to play it with you, bro. Can't wait to play. Yeah. Um, it's going to be good. There's one, two, 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 three, three. There's a couple more things. There we go. Yeah. So, Wait, did you say one, two, three, a couple? One, two, three. That's what I meant. Three. You said there's a couple. Tri- a few. Okay. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, I got you for three minutes. For three minutes. What does he do? I got game? you for th- yeah. He does it. Yeah, like yeah, three, three minutes. minutes. Yeah. Bones up. <laughs> um. So first thing, yeah. Godfall, which was a game that came out of yeah. the launch of the PlayStation yeah, yeah, Five, yeah, yeah. did terribly. No one wanted yeah. to play. It was an awful of course, game. Yeah. It looked pretty. Yeah, it did. But that was it. That was it. Um, is now no longer a PlayStation 5 exclusive. It was supposed to be a timed exclusive. Yeah. 
However, what they're doing is not just bringing it to the PlayStation to the Xbox Series X. It's now on Game Pass, but also it's free, and you can get Game Pass for one dollar <laughs> for ten years. We don't know about that just yet, but they're not just bringing it to the Xbox Series X. Yeah, they're bringing it to the Xbox One and PS4. Well, okay. So this was supposed to be like a next gen game. Yeah. And they're just like, I guess they're just turning everything down to like two. Yeah, turning like, everything down to max. Like no to reflections, uh, draw yeah, yeah. distance is one, you know. Yeah. Here, take this piece of shit game with all its settings minned out. And uh, and here. The only logic they're, I have in this, the only stupid logic that I have in this is that they were making it for Xbox because it's no longer yeah. going to be an exclusive to PlayStation. And because the Xbox Series X has got so that whole thing... And so pathetic, <laughs> it was almost exactly the same as making it for an original day of release PS4. Almost about <laughs> what I was going to say. I was yeah. going to say the only one thing is that... Because they've got that thing where they're like everything has to run on, on Xbox uh, Series yeah. X as well as Xbox One and stuff like that. That they were just like, well, we're making it for, for this console as well. Let's just fucking make it for PS4 and Xbox One and one or less. Let's just I, get into it. I think whatnot. they did it because... And they kind of need to make sales. because That's the thing, is that maybe there are some people that, that aren't paying attention that are going to think maybe it's a new game or it looks interesting yeah. that have PS4s or have Xbox ones or whatever not all of them are us were tuned in all the time right yeah yeah and they finally see something or they you know see it in the shop and it's at the right price and they get it and not realizing that it's trash they get like they do the thing you're not supposed to judge a game by its cover yeah um and that's how they do it so it's actually shady in my opinion yeah it's a piece of shit game and the people that buy it probably don't know that it's a piece of shit yeah you know? and that's that's the thing in it that's so unfortunate um the next thing is that star wars jedi fallen order yeah is getting a free PlayStation 5 update. Oh, sick. How many bugs are they increasing it? Increasing to? it tenfold. Because yeah. uh, look, if it was bugging the PS5, <laughs> it, the, P- the PS4 is even more than what the PS4... <laughs> Wait, PS5 is more than the PS4 was. Yeah. So it'd be double the bugs. Exactly. What is more it? bugs, they happen for longer, more frequently. I think they said the PS5 is 10 times the, the power of the... Uh, 10 times the bugs. 10 times the bugs, guys. You 10 thought, times the bugs. You thought falling through the world was good. Now you fall through the world into the sun. Into the sun, guys. <laughs> you just go through the world and then the gravity <laughs> pulls you towards... It. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. The the bigger you are, the the hotter you oh, burn. The, no. the bigger you are, no the faster green you burn. Quotes. Yes. No green lantern. Quotes. I finally got to work that in. But anyway, that's happening and it's free, which is awesome. Yeah. Um that's cool. That's really yeah, awesome. Yeah, free's good. The the neck the current gen updates, I should yeah. say. I feel like saying next gen because most people aren't on it now. Still. It's so dumb because Despite I want to say current selling. all the time. Yeah. And everyone's like not got the console. Yeah. Scalpers it's current but not current to consumers. Yeah. Um, that's going to be happening. Hopefully, they also work out a lot of the bugs as well. But I would love to see what it looks like on PS5 hardware. You know, it'd yeah, nice. it'll be interesting to see. And I, I wonder if the game, for those that don't know, mm. you played it on a PS4 Pro and absolutely loved it, and it was it was a great time. I played your version, your disc, on my day of release PS4, and it was buggy as hell. Say so exact same game. <laughs> so, so what caused it? And I don't think it was that I was on a PS4 and you were on a Pro. I don't know what it is, but some people, for some people, it's hit and miss. It's the luck thing between me and you. Yeah, it is. I have good luck with bugs. Yeah. Except for when I play Souls Of course, games except for when you're streaming. Like yeah, the, stream, the stream's bad luck. It's glitch City, yeah. that's what it is. Um, and whenever Katie and Sean are there, it's all Exactly, bad luck, they're right? literal glitches. But whenever I play a game, smooth sailing. Yep. And if I, I g- borrow that game, except God of War didn't do it. True. You know, God of War didn't do it. I borrowed a bunch of games from you. Uh, but like God of War never did it. You also yeah. borrowed Red Dead Redemption 2. How'd that go? I think it got installed on my PS4, you know. <laughs> you just never played it. It's never been in there. Never been booted up. <laughs> uh, do you want it back? Yes, I would actually. I'll bring it back. Because I still haven't completed the epilogue. <laughs> That's fine. Because <laughs> I don't be mad I, at me for that. Honestly, and I, I know people are going to tell me this is a bad decision. I know it's probably a brilliant game. It is brilliant. I yeah. have no intentions of playing it until we get to a point where there's nothing to play on the PS5. Mm. And even if that were the case, why why wouldn't we be playing Warzone or something? Yeah, so if that together. ever happens, because you're a few minutes away from me, I'll just borrow it then, but I'm yeah. just going to bring it back because I, no, I currently have no intentions of playing it, which is not to say that I know it's brilliant. It must be. He hates the game, guys. You heard it here? Not you only the game, but everybody that made it, especially, <laughs> especially, going back to that style, the, the Superman thing, any minorities, any women... <laughs> 
<laughs> nah, honestly, there look, are a lot of minorities in the game, and that's the reason why ships won't play. It. <laughs> I see, it's right next to Mexico. That's funny as well. So, so obviously, we're in the UK, so we don't have um, Mexicans really. Although, mm. weirdly, I did go to school with a guy who was Mexican. Okay, that's but, old, right? Yeah, so I was far like, oh, away. that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I don't really get the Mexican thing. What's the deal? And he was like, oh, they're basically like our Polish. I was like, fucking Mexicans. Fucking anyway, Mexicans. You get but, it now. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, look, I'm sure it's a brilliant game. Yeah. Um, also, isn't that funny? That my, One of my favorite games of all time is The Witcher 3. And the, the guy who's Polish is an example. And I love Poland <laughs> and all that stuff. But so look, I just don't intend to play it. I know I'm going to ca- catch yeah. a lot of flack for it. I know it's brilliant, I, but it's just a bit long. And it's just, I don't think it's my cup of tea. Mm. Um and also frick you but it'd be interesting to see because I, I feel like now that we both have brand new PS5s yes that Jedi Fallen Order would probably run really well in it I feel like it right but just like um, uh, freaking Red Dead I don't have any desire to replay Jedi Fallen Order you're trying to asthma it I don't have any desire to play Jedi Fallen Order again do you I'm guessing if you don't have the platinum, then that would be a reason for you. But forgetting the I platinum, I think I don't have the platinum. Forgetting the platinum, because don't get me wrong, like I love um, Space Wizards with laser swords. Yes, but Cal Kestis sucks. He was a bad character. The the trope of the oh he closed himself off for the Force and now has to re remember all of his abilities that sucked. Uh, the only good things in it, as far as I remember, were the villain. Yes. The cameo at the end. Yes. And uh, that one chick that sort of joins your team, but. Only tangentially and almost at the very end of the game. And the quite from stupidly, Dustin, we're like, shit, well, she's going to give us some awesome ability. No. No, no, no. She just she just gets on the ship with you and you still have to do stuff on your own. All right. That's, well, that's that. Eh? Yeah, like, that bugged me. And I, I just, Calcast is a bit annoying. Yeah. But so, and I'm, he's ginger. Who likes gingers? Right? Gingers, gingers, Worse gingers. than, yeah, that's why I really don't like anyone real in Red Dead or at freaking Rockstar, Rockstar, and he said Rocksteady, <laughs> Rockstar, there's ginger. That's it. I guarantee there's at least Get one. Get out of it. Yeah, the whole company's been been poisoned because of one ginger right. in there. Um, Jedi Fallen Order, even with the update, you're going to play it? I think I will play it with the update. I might not... I'll see how close I am to the Platinum to see if I'll go that far, but I might just breeze through the story again. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I do want to see what upgrades they've done mm. because it's so weird. Like, the game came out and then they're just like, the game's gone now. People yeah. have forgotten yeah. about it, waiting for the sequel. And yeah. then, mm. hey, we're giving a free PS5 update. It's like, no one was calling yeah, for this no and cares. you just came out for it. No one so cares. I, I want to see what why they did it. Also, if it turns out to be a minor upgrade, I'm going to be like, you could have just stayed at home. <laughs> you could have done nothing. Even turning it up to 60 FPS might be interesting because I, I wonder if, do you remember they talked about the combat system? What was it? Intuitive combat? They called it yes. something? something Thoughtful like combat. Thoughtful combat. I At least in my version of it, which are admittedly buggy on a day of release PS4, PS4 before it got cleaned out, all that stuff. It's absolute worst possible way to play the game. The combat was good, but it wasn't all that. Yeah. And I wonder if at 60 FPS, with all that reserve power of the PS5, would it be more like what they said it was? Like yeah. more of that thoughtful combat where you have all the options and you can See choose. What you mean. I think that might be interesting to try that again. Yeah. Because they kind of made it sound like it would... They made it sound to me how the combat in Ghost and The Last of Us 2 felt. Which was inc- I always felt in control. I felt like it was smooth and I had all these options and all this creativity that I could use in both of them. Yeah, and I never really felt like that in Jedi Fallen Order, but I was bought in because I had a force push and a laser sword, you know. And I, it's hard to get any to do wrong when you got that. It's the perfect mix, isn't yeah. It, you know, <laughs> they know how to like, get us right in the game. Like, it's a bad oh. blowjob. At the end oh. of the day, it's still a blowjob, isn't it? Like, it's, God damn it, you got me, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Frick. I'm not happy about this, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Um, so yeah that's coming it says uh, in the summer sometime yeah. we don't know when that's going to be but we'll see how that happens um, and the final topic yeah Ed Boone of NetherRealm Studios who make the Mortal Kombat games yeah tweeted quote tweeted James Gunn's tweet about uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 yeah saying see you all in theaters in two years time from Wednesday da 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 and he says wow James Gunn managed to work on a DC on DC and Marvel movies. That's impressive. Face th- uh, this emoji. Okay. I took this. Yes, I'm taking it the same way. I went completely, took a run- leap and a jump, and I went, "This is going to be a DC versus Marvel fighting game." Please God. I would love that. That would be cool. 
That would be so cool, and we'd be able to settle the bet between uh, uh, me and we'll settle with mm. once and for all between us and uh, Tyler. Who's yes. better, Captain America or Batman or Superman? Okay, I have a question about this because I saw I saw your tweet to Tyler about yes. like Superman versus Captain America. Like, let's settle the debate. And I was curious if you meant like who would win in a fight because I feel like that's very obvious. <laughs> It's very obvious. That was and, and Kryptonite doesn't exist in the Marvel universe. <laughs> There's no stopping Superman. Like I'm sorry. Like uh, even I will admit, you know, Batman needs the Kryptonite. It was hilarious because he was like, "Come at me, white bread," as in like he's a yeah, he's yeah, a yeah. boring superhero. Yeah, yeah. And everybody in the comment section were real about it. They were like, "Tyler, we 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 like you and everything," but but like as a character though. Superman's get Superman's fucking you up, fam. <laughs> in a fight, it's not even close. Like vibra- yeah. Ooh, we got vibranium, like nah. Sorry, fam. Also, like he's going through that vibranium. He's shield. going through the vibranium, and also, like let's say there's something he can't get through, adamantium. Yeah. You think if he superheats Wolverine's skeleton, that that's not going to cause issues? He doesn't even no. have to fight Wolverine; just keeps him super hot, and he can't do anything. <laughs> right? Like my point is, if it's a fight we're talking about, there's no way. Yeah. If we're talking about the character, like how much the character speaks, then again, to him, there's good- no way. Well, I mean, there. Well, I would say I agree with you. Of course, Steve, the clear winner. <laughs> Superman has no character, so there you go. What that would be? That would be really interesting because they're both essentially the the pure of heart, pure hope characters. Pretty much for both of the the universes, which Pretty would be much. quite an interesting thing. But I love I put it up, and I, please let this happen. Please, Ed, tell me that you're just fu- you're really like you're trying to tease. You're like, hey, we've All got I'm the we've got the is, license for this. Superman never fought the Nazis. Therefore, he must be pro Nazi. Fair point. Fair point. You can't prove otherwise. Okay, you can't prove otherwise. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna take down this action yeah, comics thing right it, there. Just lay it face down. Kind of embarrassed yeah, about yeah. that now. And this uh, pop vinyl, gonna put that away right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, that came up, and that was uh, that was something that I was thinking about there. That's all our topics that we have. Um, we have a couple of comments. I asked people Let's to read to write in to ask. If they have any questions regarding Returnal, or if they have any questions regarding anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you don't mind, I want to breeze through all the Returnal ones, yeah. and then we can get into any other topics that they yeah. ask and whatnot. Breeze through, because obviously we don't care about them or their questions. The, the them as, pe- as people in general, you know? Exactly. Unless they're uh, Patreon so Well, the, the first one is from Patreon, so we care about we you. We care Joe. about you. Joe, we care about you. Joe, we care. Joe McCormack writes in and he goes... Oh, wait, it's the Filthy Thief Fanatic. Filthy Thief Fanatic. Well, frick this guy. We care, we care less now. We care less. <laughs> Returnal is so interesting to me. It looks incredible and seems to play really well. But enemy attacks are like something you'd see at, uh, in a retro game. Not in a bad way, just thought it was an interesting observation. I can't play Returnal because I don't have a PS5, but, uh, have, but I have been playing Hades on my Switch and I'm loving that. That's another arcade game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you beat the boss for the first time, it's an amazing feeling and it's also a roguelite as well. So that's the interesting thing where you said is about rogue, the retro thing roguelite is the start that style of the game which is when you die you get sent back to the beginning okay, exactly cool. exactly cool. not um, my type of not my flavor but yeah. yeah it's definitely an acquired taste yeah. sort of thing like that but it turns out a lot of people have been vibing with this game like it's, yeah fair enough and stuff there is one um reviewer uh jeff grubb i don't know yeah, if i know seen. the name i know the name yeah he played the game and he gave it a six out of ten okay. everyone was giving it like nines and tens and he gave it a six. Returnal? Yes. Okay, okay. And he stated the reason why is because it was too difficult. He was saying it was too hard and requires too much skill. And I was like, what you're saying is that you're bad at video games. That's what that's what you're saying. Though. Right, right. It's not that he was saying that he was frustrated at going back to the beginning like you're saying. Right, okay. Like that. He was saying that it required too much skill and it was too difficult. So he was just bad at video games. Well. Yeah. It's a very RNG heavy game, right? So maybe, That's true. maybe he just got messed up. Nah, man. I've, I, 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 people were asking stuff and whatnot, and he kept on going. He had a full on review, and at no point did it seem like it was anything more than he just couldn't get, he couldn't okay. beat the game. Okay. And I was like, the whole incident anyway flamed him for it. It was like, fair enough. You have no idea. You, we can't Maybe you just anything suck. you say yeah, now. You just suck. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, the thing that he says about the retro game thing is interesting because. While it isn't the same style of games that they normally do, yeah, the shooting stuff, you know, the Rezo gun. Do you remember yeah. how it looks with yeah. like the balls of energy yeah, yeah, yeah. that come round? Yeah, it's the exact same thing in this. I did. It's funny you say that. When I was watching you stream, I was like, "Yeah, 
I can see Rezo gun in this. Specifically, there was this one thing where uh, you used, I guess, the alt fire and it shot out like five lasers that bounced off stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I see Rezo gun in this. And that's how yeah. it is. It's funny how they've done that. They're like, we're still keeping our arcade roots in this. Yeah. And we're using it in that. Which I, I think that. was quite funny. It is cool. Um, Again, the game to... looks good. It looks good. It so. is quite fun. Um, over to our Discord server. Yes. Underscore, 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 underscore. Right, so he says, oh. Oh, we haven't heard from him in a while. Um, Returnal's reveal had me hooked with its mystery and its changing world. However, I didn't expect it to be a dungeon crawler slash randomly generated world. It looks super difficult to find progress and nowhere to go in the map uh, because it's just too immense. It is a massive map. It is easy to understand when you look at your map. You can kind of get where you're going because the doors are coloured and, and it shows you a little dotted line from where you came from. Right, so right, you right. get orientated quite nicely. But I can understand if you haven't played it, then you maybe think that that's possible. Gunplay looks decent, chaotic, uh, but I feel like it, I could enjoy it. But the world design just turns me off from... It turns me off from it, which is a shame because the premise is really interesting. That's unfortunate here because I think the world design is quite nice. How are you finding the level design uh, to be, though? And how has the story progressed? I'm not going to say what the story is all about, but the story is progressing really interestingly. Okay, okay, okay. The intrigue is there, and I am i can't wait to find out more about this, this goddamn astronaut. I want to know what's going on, the house, There's everything. And it makes you also want to find out why you're stuck in this loop. It's like, why am I in this loop? How am I finding myself? One of the things I admire about you as a gamer, of course, isn't your skill because you have none of that. I have no skill yet. But you give games my, m by far more than their fair shake, I especially the ones that are bad. I'm not saying it's bad, but like, um, freaking what's the Anthem? Anthem. <laughs> you gave that its fair shake, right? Yeah. Even though you could see its flaws. Uh, another game, which is a game that I didn't, I didn't think it was bad, but I just couldn't finish or didn't really care to play, was Death Stranding, mm -hmm. which you played. And I'm sure there's a great story tucked away in there, but because I couldn't finish, I just wasn't interested. Yeah. I never got there. And so I like that you get to see all these stories because you will see it through to the end. I'll power through, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's cool. The first two hours of this I streamed, and I don't know if it was because I was streaming or because it was still brand new to me that I didn't I didn't feel too good after the first two hours. I was like, right. like I got into it and I was like, everything is foreign. I don't understand any of the systems. I don't know what's going yeah. on. I was Does trying to feel... be entertaining as well. So maybe it was distracting me from reading stuff properly. The systems in the game, do they feel very unusual as a gamer? No. Okay. So once I understood them properly... Right. They feel completely. I of course I get. Of course, this is how cool, this works. Cool, of course, cool. and it's it's intuitive. I now know without having to think how to get through certain dungeons right, or right. where to go, what my next objective yeah. is. And there's no there's no tutorials. There's no uh, like oh you need to practice this thing or it tells you to do that etc. Right, it's just right, right. go and figure it out. So, like I said about the um the replicator and the 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 figurine astronaut right. thing you, you learn by experience you die you come back here oh that's what this must do exactly okay. it okay. didn't it didn't spoon feed that to yeah. me and i felt yeah. kind of respected in a way it was like hmm yeah it respects me as a gamer that's one of those things i like about games like sekiro and stuff like that which is that they they don't pander to you yeah um on the other hand like some of the difficulty stuff like i don't want a game to be hard because it's hard like i don't find it rewarding to beat a game that's difficult because it's difficult yeah i find it rewarding to beat a good game if it's difficult that's part of it but i don't want it to be difficult just because it's difficult yeah you know it needs to be part of the artistic vision not yeah, for the sake it, of being it's difficult. part of the thing where for example for me um and i've I don't expect this to happen anytime soon, but for me, I would rather dif the difficulty increase the, the intelligence of the AI rather than, in most games, either you do less damage or it has more health or it does more damage, yeah. stuff like that, right? All it really does is make the fight longer. Yeah. Right? I would rather the difficulty... Or like people say, oh, you know, increasing the difficulty in Doom makes things so different. No, no, no. They just attack more often and you do less damage and, and they have more health. Like, it, that isn't more difficult. It's not... The game hasn't changed mm. it's just harder right that's I, what that's what's good about even, this game even in there's no fight. difficulty setting it's just it's right. designed for a specific point and whether or not you pick up certain buffs yeah, yeah, or certain yeah. things for your weapons yeah. or something or a better weapon or a better that 
then it gets easier or harder right, developing right, right. on depending on that. Because like for me, like again, if I was going to change the difficulty, I would want things like, let's say a very simple way to do what I'm asking because I wouldn't expect as of today, let's say your current, your regular NPC enemies to go from like, you know, you throw a grenade on easy and they just turn and go, oh, what is that? And it explodes yeah. to like, the, you know, them throwing it back and stuff or like flanking you and stuff. But maybe if you're on easy mode, the boss has like three waves um, and then if you take it all the way to hard, it not only has those three waves, but then it has like these another ability that it can do and halfway at health, it will do something else. Like I want, I want it to be more of a challenge, not just take me longer. Yeah. Right. Because uh, that I don't find rewarding. And I, w I'm worried about this game where the, like the savagery and how you, when you die and get reset, yeah. if that's going to kill it and just. It's just, it makes it take longer. It's, it is, I think this is definitely something that people have to try and then go, yeah. oh, this isn't for me. But then obviously you've paid money for the game. That's the thing, that's $70. One, yeah. That, that's where I worry about this kind of game at that price point, yeah. which is at $70, well, it isn't for me. But then not every game is for you. And sometimes the only way to find that out is to, like if you bought, if you bought Forza, no one could complain that Forza isn't worth the money. I was going to say that. But it, if it isn't for you... Like now, what do you, you know what I mean? That's what it is, and it's 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 a tough situation, and and that's not a fault of the game. That's just no, a fault exactly. of gaming in general. And you yeah. don't know it's if the game's going to be yours. Person. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. You, Diogo, specifically. He says, um, "How do you find the level design, though? The level design is insane because, as I said, it's all randomly generated. Every time you go into it, it's going to be completely different. And when you open up a door, you don't know what you're going to expect on the other side of it. Don't know how I feel about that. I." I, I, it's interesting, man. Yeah. It's interesting. Don't get me wrong. There's going to be some times where you recognize a room. Yeah, of or, course. Yeah, yeah. And some areas where you're like, okay, I know what could be hidden here. Usually they put an item over here. Usually they have a little section over one of there. these things, yeah. I can expect that. Yeah. Exactly. But it's also different. And it, it's strange because it's almost like it's randomly generated or procedurally generated. But it can't be because it's so... It works. It's, right, right, usually right, right. when something's procedurally generated, there's errors or there's things that just don't work right. Yeah, it puts two things that shouldn't... It, it gives you like a spoon and a knife. Yeah. Instead of a, or a spoon and a fork and you're missing one of the things you really need. But it's not like that. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Um, that's really... Yeah, that's really... I like it. I don't know what All I can right. say about it. It's really interesting. And I want to try it. And also there's multiple different... Um, uh, they call them biomes. There's a couple different uh, worlds that you go to, yeah. and each one is completely different. I was in the first one. It's all very dark and like foresty and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And then we just move on to this like red desert place, and it's all completely different. Different enemies over there as well. It's all just amazing. Forgetting the age difference, like I'm actually interested in trying Returnal, but not something like uh, Bloodborne, which you played the other day, or, right. or the Soul, whatever the frick. Which <laughs> I, I watched you stream that as well. And I wonder if it's not. The, like one of it is the movement you know i prefer the, the look of the movement in yeah. returnal i also don't one of the things i hate doing in games is reading and that sounds stupid mm -hmm. i like to be shown and told stuff because right. i'm doing a visual thing i don't want to have to read and en log entries to get my story and stuff right and that seems very heavy in like the souls games yeah it's very much right. the you have to pick up the law yeah, to i don't want to read if i wanted to read i'd be reading a book i like to read books <laughs> And yeah. I like to play games. I don't want to do the two. I'm here to play games right, right. now. Right. So that also has me interested. So I, I don't know. I, I'm in. I'm definitely interested to play it. And I'm in a fortunate position where my mate has it. Yeah. Uh, and I can also borrow it from you. There you go. Oh, yeah. from your, uh, your Not from your other mate. Because your, your real mate doesn't have it, right? right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I can try it without having to pay for it. Yeah. And this is what you guys are missing out with Blockbuster. Because that's what you could do back in the day. Blockbuster had it right. You right. guys forced them out. You guys forced them out there. Um, yeah, so that, that answer, hopefully that answers your question there. Um, Anti-Juice writes in. <laughs> yeah. And he says, I've heard Returnal is difficult, but how difficult is it compared to uh, something like Demon Souls? Uh, it's... How do I put it? Because they're very, very different styles of games, aren't they? It's it's different in terms of like it's this is like modern and it's a roguelike but it, I'd say there are similarities in terms of there's a system and if you fuck up the system 
that's where you die. Right. So like if you choose to do too many hits on an enemy that isn't staggered by your abilities and he comes to attack you and you die, that's your fault right. in, in Doom Demon Souls. And then the same thing in, in Returnal, if you get greedy and you go for an enemy that's in a, in a phase where he's about to attack and you can't dash because you're already doing your animation of something else, then you fucked up there. Right. So it's very similar in that, but it's not as difficult in my opinion. I think, I think Returnal's a bit more rewarding as Have well. Have you done some boss fights yet? Yeah. Okay, how are the boss fights compared to, because you did a big boss fight in Bloodborne or whatever it was. I think they're better. Okay. At least I, visually I know, pleasing. Yeah. At least yeah. visually pleasing. Which I feel like, when you say visually pleasing, is that forgetting the difference in age of the games? Because one, one, one of these games Actually, is six years point. old, right? That's a good point. So a six-year-old game is never going to compare with a current game visually. You know? Do you know what? That's a good point. There is a mechanic with the boss fights that that uh, Returnal doesn't have that Demon Souls has, where like you know you have like weak points on um, yeah, on yeah. things where like you whittle them down or they get down on their knee and then you hit them on the head a couple times, right. and then you retreat. Or like that it's is, got this one piece of broken armor and that's its weak spot, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, that's not a, a thing in Returnal. It's just pretty much like whittle Shoot them wherever, down yeah. and they have phases and yeah, stuff yeah. like that, and that's how it goes. Is is Demon Souls and Bloodborne not a what was it roguelite? I think Demon Souls does Demon Souls count as a, I, don't, I don't know. I think they count as just like a Souls genuinely born. Genuinely asking. That's what they count as. I think it's just their own, it's its own genre. Souls genre. Cuz well cuz if someone may who wasn't, you know, from software, if they made a game like that, you wouldn't call it a a Bloodborne style game or like Sekiro, you wouldn't call that kind of game, right? Yeah, they call it Souls like dungeon crawler. Oh, okay. Yeah. But so it's not it's not a case of you die, you go back to the beginning. Yeah. Oh, okay. it's a subgenre. Okay. It's a subgenre of the ro- of a roguelike. Okay, cool. I did think they seemed similar, but yeah. I, you know, I don't know. It's not it's not my kind of game. I'm not up to date on all of the terms. That's yeah, my yeah, issue yeah. as well. So yeah. there's that. Talking of these games, yes. uh, I thought it'd be good to get your impressions. Uh how do you feel now that you beat Bloodborne that a five year old did it? How does that make you feel? That was really disheartening because I was like, I was getting amped up to play this stream. And yeah. I was like, yes, let's get in. I'm going to get this Bloodborne platinum. And then this guy posts this like, my son beat Bloodborne. And he's five <laughs> years old. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, my days. I cracked up. I watched a bunch of those videos as well. He, he's not the kid. For five, he's sick. He's really good. He's really you know? good for five, which is uh, which is part of the reason why I managed to muster the strength together after a while and go, right. I can make it through this. Right. Uh, I made it through. There yeah. we go. Um, da, 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 and I think, I think, yes. Okay, that's that's everything in in regards to the questions that people had sick. for the thing. One thing I did want to mention, in terms of the performance for like loading times and yeah. stuff like that, there's this one for thing Eternal. where you, for Returnal, yeah. There's one thing where you teleport from a certain pad to a whole different part of the map. Right. And it's like, they do a cool animation where you turn into an orb and you're like, and you fly over. Right, yeah, yeah. But it's like a second and it's really quick. It's and that's very just quick. All really cool. Loads. It's not the Destiny 1, you got go to get on the ship, go to orbit. There. Yeah, yeah. Re enter orbit. Dinklebot tells you some stuff. Then he stops speaking. <laughs> exactly. Then you get the animation of you landing. Not, yeah, that, not that awful that. stuff. Okay. And also, there is some really cool physics in this thing where, like, if you're shooting near some, like, greenery area, yeah. it's almost like there's a vortex of air that follows the bullet and it pulls up leaves oh, in as it goes. Cool. And I'm like, ooh, that's really that's good cool. looking. What about with the katana? Does it do anything cool like that? I think it does. I can't remember right there. But I don't know. I'll probably find out when I jam it. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, that's all the um, the uh, questions we had. Gaming. We had a couple of people write in for... Da, 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 da. Super Dan writes in and he goes, what are your thoughts on this? It seems like... And he puts a picture here. I'll, I'll, I'll read out as uh, an interview. I'll read out his comment first. It seems like Square Enix are making Resident Evil less because <laughs> we made the mistake that uh, Resident Evil was made by Square Enix oh, and it's made by Capcom. Uh, um, I feel like... We're never going to live that down. <laughs> I feel like you guys need to relax. Chillax, <clears throat> Dan. Fucking hell. You know, we were like eight hours into content creation. It's you're hot. on the spot. You're in front of a camera. We're doing this for you. <laughs> How dare you? He goes, it seems like Square Enix are making Resident Evil less of a horror game to appeal to the masses. And this really pisses me off. 
like the appeal of like the appeal of Resident Evil should be that it's a scary game and, no, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, so apparently they're toning down the amount of horror in the game to sort of appeal to uh, the masses. <clears throat> How do you feel about that? I don't care about the games. Because you don't play, you don't yeah, like horror as I'm, well. I gen, as a general rule, I don't play like roguelike games. It's just not for me. And I'm not a big fan of, of horror as a, as a genre. Like I love that people love it. I love that it gives people entertainment and... um it's just not for me. I don't enjoy horror movies. Uh, it, the most, the closest to horror that I enjoy is stuff like uh, the crap, those crappy Resident Evil movies. The old ones. Yeah, yeah. and mostly because it's Mila Jovovich. Yeah. Right? I don't really care. I do think that there's probably a, a mix because you, you want as many people playing your game, right? The more people that play your game, the more likely it is you can make another good game. Yeah. Uh, equally, I don't think if you make PT, everybody's going to want to play it. Mm -hmm. Some people don't appreciate shitting their pants. I mean, those and then people not aren't, being able to sleep for three days. Those people aren't really people. It's like, yeah, people's a bit strong. What I'm what I'm getting from what you're saying is that you're not very good at video games because you don't like roguelites and the uh, and stuff like Dungeon that's, Crawlers and yeah, things like that. Facts, hard true, games true, you don't true, like. That. Yeah, that's right. That's and right. you're a pussy bitch because you don't like horror games, not like horror movies. Yeah, I thought I said that pretty clearly. Oh, sorry, we, but I was rounding right, it up. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, no, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, quick summary. Right <laughs> I, to be honest, I think making it like less scary, less horror. Yeah. Ha like the question is does it lose its soul has it lost yeah. its essence if it still has its essence but it's just not as scary as you would like as long as it's still it, the game that's okay right like let's say they make god of war 5 yeah. and it's still got the great combat and it's still got the great story it's just a bit short mm. i still love it right if it wasn't long enough. Just to make it more accessible to everyone. Right. If if people were like, ah, 40 hour games, not many, everybody's finishing it, but like at 28 hours, yeah. people, everybody finishes it. I could, I could probably live with that as long as it's kept its soul. Right. Uh, the big thing I was worried about for The Last of Us 2 is were they going to ruin or, or misunderstand or miss the relationship between Joel and Ellie, which they do not. The only thing I was really, that was my real make or break was do they get that relationship right mm -hmm. and I, when i watched your stream and i saw that very first cutscene, i knew they got it right that's good enough for Done. me the soul's intact that's the most important thing so is the soul of resident evil still there that's my question to you mm. um be, because how scary the game is that's 100 percent personal taste yeah right maybe the majority of people felt like the games were too scary you know, or maybe they felt like they weren't scary enough. If they're if they're really not scary at all, maybe that's. I don't, also, I the question is, and I worry about RE8 in particular using this as a metric because everybody's horny for Lady D and those little vampire chicks. Yeah. Now, how does that affect? I'm one of them. Me too, bruvs. How does that affect horror when, like, how afraid of saying you want to fuck can you be? <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? For, for real, that when, line. when when you're when you're all like when you're always a bit horny yeah. for the villain, th then maybe they can't always be that scary. Now, mm. if they can do both, if they can make you terrified of her but still want a fear banger, then like that's even more impressive. Again, the question is: Is the soul intact? They should come to me. That's the way I feel about my girlfriend. <laughs> She doesn't watch this, does she? No, she no, we're safe. Yeah, so uh, my question would be Is the soul intact? Yeah. And I do appreciate that there are horror games, and that is, as a genre, it exists and it should be healthy. Mm. And I, because I don't really know about its place in that, like to me, you got PT. Yeah. That's you actually want to test. Bad. You know, you, you wear white underwear to test yourself <laughs> and check it when you're done playing. That's PT players. And then it always seemed to me like Resident Evil was people that enjoy the horror franchise, but they still want to sleep when they go to bed. That's right? what I always took it yeah. as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, that was a very wordy answer. But the real question is, do you feel like it still feels, it's still got the soul of Resident Evil? We were talking about Fast and Furious earlier, you know, and um, they're kind of ridiculous. And at least in my opinion, four and five are where it loses touch of what it is, yeah. which is kind of silly, kind of, fun that's the point it's similar to like pacific rim yeah you know pacific rim knew exactly what it is that's why it was such a great movie so there is you know is it soul intact yeah does it still feel like resident evil you just wish it was a bit scarier for your taste it's like if you if you cook, if someone says i'm cooking a curry right is it a good curry 
it might not be as spicy as you would make it but is yeah. it a good the question is is it is it good it's you tasty. know is the rice undercooked and you know is the chicken undercooked and, you know, i like, think they get it I yeah. think they get what you're saying. No, no no let me send 10 minutes <laughs> give me one more analogy yeah. give me one more analogy <laughs> but like you know i like that's the important thing yeah i agree i agree that's pretty much what i was going to say it does it's always this question whenever someone says they're removing something or they're taking toning back yeah. or they're pulling back on the reins there's always the question i was like well were you gonna go all the way before right yeah yeah, yeah. and was are you that turning it down from 10 yeah you turn it down from seven exactly yeah and also we assume that going full out was gonna mean it was gonna be good we don't know that though that's the problem right turning things up to 10 isn't always a good thing and it doesn't always work. Like, look, if, if let's say just driving a hundred miles an hour down the road isn't always the best thing. Name me one time when it's not. It's true. Bad analogy. School nope. areas. Nope. Natural selection. You've got a newborn baby thing. in the car. It seems like the baby's problem. It seems like the baby's problem, actually. That's good. I, good point right the, now. Because this, <laughs> like you said, though, this is an interesting thing. Is turning everything up to 10 necessarily good? Like, um, let's say the PlayStation can do 8K. And all your games play in 8K. Well, do you have a monitor that can do 8K? Most people don't. No. So does it matter? Mm -hmm. Does it actually make it better? Um, same with frame rates. Oh, sacrifices like, in other areas when you do that as well. Right. Let's say um, the Mass Effect thing on the Xbox One, it really will do 120 FPS at 4K. How many people's monitors do 120 FPS? Yep. Not, not that many. Not. Or 120 at 4K? Not many. Exactly. Right? So is turning up to 10 good? Is making the next, let's say RE9, if that is like PT levels, would that be good for the franchise? I bet it'd be really good for for the people that love those sorts of hardcore horrors. But I bet, I bet it wouldn't do as well overall. I bet it'd have yeah. it'd have much more prestige, but it wouldn't sell as many games. Yeah, and people wouldn't get as many completions and stuff. I think what this is spiking, and maybe Dan and a lot of other people who are worried about this, this is spiking the the Assassin's Creed feeling. In yeah. everyone, where okay, they completely abandon everything That's that fair. the game is just so they can appeal to a wider audience, and it's all for money at the end of the day, isn't it? And their yeah. businesses, and you know, everyone's worried they're doing the same thing. I don't feel like Capcom, I don't feel like they need to. Ari is such a well established brand, but I, I know what you mean, which is that like if all of these games keep toning everything down and making it all the same, you end up with a bunch of just grey games they're all the same game yeah, and they yeah. all suck because they're trying to get as many people to buy them and in worrying about the number of sales they miss what makes them sell yeah then I, I mean I don't know I don't know and hope <laughs> the other thing is it'll be hard to tell with RE8 because again everyone's horny for Lady D yep so it probably sell just because everybody wants some of that big beer. yeah everybody wants the death by snoo snoo thing you know <laughs> which shit you know, maybe mad, mad props to them. You know, they're fucking. Every, we want it too, bro. We want it. Really, too. I think it's just brave of them to finally put a real woman in the. You know, crazy down to kill you. A real drinks woman, your blood. Very accurate. Right down. You know, probably like a relatable woman. Yeah, exactly. Other women are True like, I life. can, I can relate to this woman. Right, eight exactly. foot tall. Exactly. Right, right. <laughs> um, did you know that the um. The woman that's doing the the mocap and everything for for Lady D is the stunt double for Milia Jovovich in nah, from Resident Evil. That's sick. Such a weird thing that they. Just How tall like, is she? I bet she's like four foot eight. She's like five foot six. Uh, <laughs> Milia Jovovich stunt double. I just I'm genuinely curious how tall she is. Stunt double height. I think you have to find out if it's the, who plays Lady D, and then you'll find out it's her. And then you can find it from there. Sean wrote in, in response to Dan's uh, comment. He goes, I'm glad that you said Square Enix and not Capcom. Because we all know it's Square Enix that made uh, Resident Evil. Definitely not Capcom. <laughs> That's right, Sean. Yes. You learn. Learn your, your correct companies. We are here to educate you. I right? feel like not everybody is quite so... Um involved in in the so they're not really so well informed as us that's why we're here exactly it's public service that's what we're doing right that's here guys it uh height is it i don't think this is the right person let me have a look at her i did see a picture no, i don't think that's her no that wasn't her she was a much more it. spry and young person yes. <laughs> anyway uh yeah so that's happening there there's one more one more topic uh, and it's written in by Ben the Nunfucker. Okay. 
And he said, thoughts. And it's simply a Game Informer article saying, The Witcher 3 <laughs> Thoughts. Di- <laughs> thoughts, that's it. Thoughts, guys. How you doing? The Witcher 3 director has resigned from his position at CDPR following workplace conduct allegations. Oh, shit. In an email to his staff, he said he was going to take the time off to reflect and better himself as a person. That's really shitty, isn't it? That sucks. Yeah. That does suck. I, um... I don't know if I'm going to throw as much shade at CDPR for this as I did with Ubisoft because they at least have made one good game yeah. in a while. And also, they seem like they're doing something about it, right? Whereas in Ubisoft, there seems to be nothing. Yeah, well, that's the thing as well is that it, by the sounds of things, it came up and they were like, yeah, hey, you got to go. Whereas yeah. Ubisoft was like, oh, yeah, you came up. Uh, that's just the culture here. That's fine. Continue. But we're going to be hiring new talent and they're women as well. No problem. I don't know. I, don't, I honestly I don't know because I st- I'm still conflicted about cyberpunk. Yeah. And so I don't know if we should just be going free for giving them as much shit as possible or saying like, actually, they did doing okay here. I don't know, man. I, I don't just know. think this is just another, another shit thing that like we had this one development company, this one publisher that we held in such high regard. Yep. And then Never meet like your we, heroes, innit? I was like, we met our hero. That's exactly what yeah. I was just about to say. That we met our hero and it all just crumbled in front of yeah. us. Yeah. Turns out they have issues. They're just regular people, innit? In it, There's like fucking cocaine issues. They're alcoholics. They're beating people behind the scenes. So it's just I'm going to do a very quick like devil's advocate because I do not know. Yeah. CDPR, especially right now, once it gained, grew in size, is a very, in general, very left-leaning uh, company. The, the people there are very left-leaning. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them also are like the blue hair, SJW types. They've all got like pronouns and BLM and all, and all of that type of stuff in their profiles and stuff. And the reason I mention that is because like improper conduct or whatever that was. Yeah, it was a workplace, workplace, well, a workplace conduct mm-hmm. allegations. Okay. Many of the people on that in that field of beliefs will say things like, "You had sex with someone you regret the next day, therefore it's that's a rape." You know, that's yeah, not the same thing. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so is this a Ubisoft level of of like actual real allegations, or is this somebody alleged bullshit stuff, but from pressure within the company, the guy yeah. felt they had to leave? Like, I I don't know, and I'm not saying that's not the case. I'm not saying don't yeah. believe any of these people. I'm saying first of all, it's allegations. Which means nothing's been proved. It's one person's word against another. Yeah. Which is not to say that the allegations are false, but that we don't know. And that this seems like a, a company at which the right kind of allegations are enough to get you sacked, regardless of the truth. I was going to say that's not kind saying of, the guy didn't do it. That's kind Devil's of what, what my feeling was with this as well. Is that there's no way of knowing what the truth is for us at yeah. least at this moment especially because there's probably not gonna they're probably gonna do an investigation but it'll be internal there's no point in publicizing this sort yeah. of stuff it could just be that the guys further up is like that we can't take this kind of pr hit we're already in a shit situation anyway how about we pay you handsomely and you just leave you've yeah, had you a good choose to resign you've yeah. had a good service resign yeah and the guy's like, do you know what? I don't need this headache. I've got a family. I don't care about it. I'm going to head off. Did you say I've got a family I don't care about? No, I don't I don't care. I've got a family. Oh, okay, and okay. Two separate things. Okay. And he's like, I'm going to head off and just like, go fish for the rest of my life. Right, right, right. Or it could just be that he is a bastard as well. And he's just like, I'm going to get yeah, out in front of it. I've got this option right here. I mean, he's Polish it's, after all. It's true. You do hate <laughs> the Poles. <laughs> um, we have no way of knowing. But yeah. it is... It's just shit to know that there's any kind of controversy like that around yeah. someone we used to regard so highly. Well, yeah, company we used C- to regard so highly. CDPR seemed like they were the one, the the knight in shining armor. Yeah. And then it turned out that for whatever reason and whatever practices they did to get ready for cyberpunk, uh, they forgot the shining armor and yeah. the horse and the chivalry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, at, every, at every turn, they just threw away the those few things that made them and the witcher what it was. And, you know, like they grew too fast. They had too many people. Not enough people knew what the vision was. They couldn't agree on stuff. Some things were too ambitious. Some things weren't ambitious enough. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. This ended up being an, us talking about CDPR. Yeah. I really, I don't know what to feel. Like, for example, the thing with uh, Ubisoft, where that's different, there's actually, there was actually legal cases brought out. Yeah. This is allegations. This is yeah. workplace allegations as opposed to like a legal case. That's different. Mm. That is somebody's word 
going to somebody in the company. It could just be that maybe this dude ate someone's lunch and they didn't like it. And, they're and up, you sure. think that's a joke. You work in enough, I'm telling you, you work in enough places, you'll meet people that would, that would do that. I'm not saying that's what happened. But the one difference is somebody brought like a criminal case uh, allegations against the company. Yeah. And in this case, it's one person's word. Right now, it might turn into a criminal case. It should if it's real. And there's a reason why it's uh, innocent until proven guilty. You're supposed to absolutely. Just, you're supposed to wait until yeah. everything comes out on the yeah. table, and then go, "All right, this guy's saying." Blah, blah, blah. Um, there's that's everything to do with that. There is one cool. more thing that Sean brought up, which I saw this as well, but it's only being reported by this one website called the Hashtag Show. Doesn't sound okay. very credible. That sounds to be about as credible <clears throat> as we are. Exactly. Um, and apparently exclusive because this they're the only people we're reporting on it they so. are exactly us exactly <laughs> yeah um a bloodborne series is in the early development at hbo studios okay he goes i hope it's just people dying and rolling because <laughs> that's all that bloodborne is i was gonna say so something i because i don't play the games and i i did i will say i did watch george's video all yeah. like hour and 45 minutes of it found it uh, he makes much better content than we do. Yes, he for does. one. He does. Don't tell uh, him that. Don't tell him that. No, he doesn't watch our videos. Yeah. Cunt as well, but fucking bastard. So, you know. But um, frick that cunt. Uh, it, he made it sound really interesting, and I spoke to him about it on Twitter and stuff. And I was like, "Is that law? Do you learn it through the game, or is it all in like things that you find?" He's like, "Nah, most of the for most of it, most of this law is stuff that you find, and you have to read between the lines and yeah. and all this stuff." Or realistically for most people you watch a video of somebody that did that yeah. right and it gets explained to you so i don't let's assume it's real i don't know if there's actually enough there and if people connect enough with the story to make a, a show about it like what's the what is what is the concept of these souls games so it's always like your so if it's demon souls yeah. you're a a person that's died but you have to come back to you've been like Again, I haven't played many Demon's yeah, Souls yeah, yeah. games. The last one that I played, I think I got the idea was that you were stopped and you are being sort of like, you have to fight these other demons and acquire souls and kill these other, these enemies, these big boss enemies that mm -hmm. are like <clears throat> holding all the souls off from the world. Really strange okay. concept. I'm like, not too, I'm not really. Basically you die this. and you have to kill demons or whatever that are stopping other people's souls from passing on as That's a general it seems gist. like okay. I, again i'm not yeah I, I don't play many of them but i have started to get into them i feel like that's something you could you could probably make a show you can the thing is you can make a show of anything that's that's just not shit well i was gonna say that the hbo show the last of us one there's already a defined story yeah. so you could go wrong yeah M maybe the fact that this doesn't have very much to go on it's it leaves it open to interpretation and c very hard to mess up yeah i feel like i mean well we know for a fact for example that like you know the ac games are pretty good but the movie is the highlight of the franchise it's actually you're not really a fan of ac until you watch the movie and, and <clears> love <throat> it of course you yes. know it's, it, the, the games are okay you're like okay you loved it but how much yeah. did you love and it? they progressively get better this is well known fact so the last three i think are the by far the pinnacle of the games uh, but the movie is just like a step above. <clears throat> exactly. It's uh, got fucking... Um, that one guy. What's his name? Fassbender. Michael Fassbender. How yeah. could it be bad? Exactly. How could it be bad? It couldn't. It isn't. Because oh. it's not. Exactly. So, uh, although I do actually, I do agree with you. I think that having something so well loved as The Last of Us, not AC, <laughs> and having it with such a defined... Because it, that, especially one is super defined mm -hmm. like it's incredibly linear it is just a linear narrative story that it is very easy to let's say you don't get off track let's say you don't add anything you do exactly it just not do it right or not do it you deliver it incorrectly that... yeah right exactly so you might be on something which yeah. is like not having the the groundwork actually might be the advantage but also, this could, could be completely fake because it's just being exclusively brought to you by the hashtag show. Um, yeah, I feel like we should be doing more exclusives as well. Exclusive. Henry Cavill is coming back to play Superman. Uh, yeah. he's also, yeah. the Snyderverse has been restored. Exclusive. Exclusive. And also, PlayStation come out with their own uh, Game Pass model. And it's free. Every game is free. Exclusive. You heard it here first. Exclusive, guys. I think we should make those videos. <laughs> I think we should just do it. There are people out there Let's that make bullshit dislikes. videos anyway. Let's just Fuck. get a million dislikes. We can be the, the emergency awesome of the gaming scene. Perfect. Let's do it. Let's do Why it. Why are we doing that? Are we Let's doing sell that? out. Then I can really get my hentai wrapped 
Lamborghini. With Monica Dambo on there. Yeah. There we go. <clears throat> Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in for another episode of the True Gamer Podcast. Yeah. Uh, it's been an awesome time. Thank you very much for joining me, yeah, bro, bros. with that. Uh, shall we move on and make other awesome content for these people? I mean, I suppose that the only awesome content on the internet is made by us. Yes. And the only awesome content on the uh, Four Players Network, the FPN, is also made by us. Exactly. So we can't let them down. We can't let them down. We are holding up YouTube yeah. single-handedly. We're back. Oh, it aches, it aches, holding it all up. Uh, uh, On that note, if for as little as a dollar a month you wanted even more content, mm -hmm. patreon.com forward slash conversations, where you get exclusive access to the Patreon only conversation podcast. Damn right. And access into the uh, Patreon Discord room, which is one of the better rooms. Yep. yep, uh, yep. It's one of my top three, anyway. That's right. That's right. You guys can get all of that and loads more. Head over to patreon.com forward slash conversations. Bro, thank you for joining me. Uh, we'll see you guys all next week. And, uh, well, I'll catch you in the next one. I'll catch you in the next one. I had to do a pop right there. Yeah, that you did a good. pop and I had an explosion, so I think we evened out. <laughs> now you're trying, <laughs> trying to top me now. Now I'm trying to top you. That's right. Oh, fuck. As soon as I said it, I was like, that was a mistake. <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs>